So we want to welcome to the podium the Iowa Hawkeyes. Jim Barnes in his third season at Iowa, 28th season overall as a head coach, along with student athletes Anna Davis, a senior middle blocker who played in all 32 matches last season, and Michelle Urquhart, senior outside hitter who finished third in the Big Ten in total aces in 2023. A reminder to those in the room, please state your name and affiliation when you're asking a question. And uh, to those on the podium, please be sure to speak into the mic when <laughs> answering questions. Jim, we'll let you open up with uh, an opening statement. All right, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Just welcome. Um, appreciate you all here. Honored to kick off this first press conference uh, of Media Days. Uh, with me, I know you already introduced, but a little more detail. We got Michelle, a.k.a. Mickey Urquhart, um, and Anna, a.k.a. CEO Davis. Uh, two incredible seniors on our team uh, helping us build this program. We've, um, this year we returned seven players on our roster, so um, pretty young. We have six freshmen and five transfers, so that's over 60% of our team's new. Um, but I brought the, the, the older ladies here to, to help me do this thing. They're incredible, smart, brilliant. Um, athletes who are who came here to Iowa to help us turn Iowa into a winner uh, so really honored to have them here uh, to answer any of your questions and start talking volleyball because I know we're anxious to get in the gym and start playing would also mention Ella and Callie will be walking around the room with microphones so please just raise your hand if you have a question up front Uh, Aaron Ferguson, Wisconsin State Journal. Welcome. Um, coach, for you, you brought in Claire, uh, who's from Madison. And um, I guess just what do you like about her game? What does she add to your team? And for the players, how have you gotten to know her? What do you like about her? And, and what's the difficulty of adjusting to a new setter? Yeah, um, I'm going to let them start with Claire, and I'll finish for the grand finale. So why don't you guys talk a little bit about Claire? Um, Claire's an awesome person. I spent a lot of time with her on and off the court this past spring got to know her in a lot of ways I think one of the first things people describe her as is very nice and outgoing um, she's a person that will always be saying hi and wishing you just I hope you have the best day and say it in the most genuine way and she genuinely means it in everything she does but then when you get on the court with her and get in other aspects she's competitive and fiery and has this edge to her that she is going to win and she's going to find a way to win and that's not just on the court, but how she attacks school and in the classroom and even games or random things that we'll do outside of volleyball and things like that. And she also has this confidence to her that I think she exudes to her teammates and pushes into her teammates and makes us better and work harder with her. Um, I think that's part of it with the transition to having a new setter is a setter that is confident and knows what she's doing. And that's Claire. She is confident in her abilities, which then makes all of us around her confident in our own abilities. Yeah, going off of that, um, so not only that, but she finds ways to make us successful as hitters. Um, and it's always, hey, what do you need? What do you need from me? How can I make you better? And I think like as a pin hitter especially, like that's what I look for in a setter. Um, somebody that's always willing to take feedback um, both directions. And she is always the first person in, last person out, willing to work 110% extra mile. Um, so we love her to death, in case you guys didn't know, she's a phenomenal dancer <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> but yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we f were fortunate for the transfers came in in January. So Claire was one that we've gotten to build our, our foundation of our team with adding Claire within it. And, uh, you know, we have certain boxes we check with different athletes when we're evaluating them. She checked every box. And then when we got here, she was better than we thought. Um, I told her I've coached an All-American setter, uh, was a lefty as well at Baylor, and uh, I said, you're better than her. You have more ability, more talent than she does, and this spring just uh, amplified what she can do. Um, she'll fill up the stat sheet. Uh, she's a major threat, um, but she's the most, one of the most selfless setters on top of that. So again, just checks every box for us. Yep, here in the middle. How's it going, Coach P for a Big Ten Plus? Year three into it. Talk to me through when you first got the offer for the job, what your expectations were, and to where they are now entering year number three. Yeah, you know, we're honored to be uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. And, and uh, you know, me and my family were 
ecstatic about coming here and building this program. We knew it was from going to be from the ground up, and, and it certainly was. Um, you know, there was a lot to overcome. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the things overcome, but there were a lot. Part of that was bringing in and changing. You know, when you're building a house, you don't always see the restoration in the inside from the from the sidewalk. Uh, the inside is what we were really uh, restoring, and, and I brought these two players with us to help teach people how to come to work every day, have a great attitude, and treat each other really well. And that restoration has been going on for two years, and I think you're really going to see some of the what's uh, what our team's really about this year. I think we've put things in place. Of course, we're inexperienced as far as teams playing in the Big Ten, players playing in the Big Ten, but we have a lot of talent and we have depth. Um, we're healthy. Um, so I, I think a lot of that work's going to show this year. Coach, you, Lincoln Arneal with the uh, Huskers Illustrated. Coach, you talked about this in your opening with so much roster turnover, how what, how do you go about culture building? You talk about building the house up. How do you do that? And if, if the players, what have you gone through this spring to kind of welcome all the newcomers? Yeah, you know, and if we don't get that part right, the wins don't come. And it's building our, our roster, building our, our teamwork, and uh, getting on the same page. And the seven players returning were all in and for our program, brought in the four transfers. Like I said, we had 11 in the spring to really – solidify what we're trying to do. So we're, we're happy about that. We brought in, again, after that, six more this summer. Um, these guys done a great job getting everybody on the same page. You know, they're in the gym all summer working out. And, um, you know, their coach is on the floor. Both these players could coach the team as well as I can. So they were in the gym getting after it. And uh, when we start in two days, I expect to just walk on and be going full tilt because they've, they've really gotten this team ready. Yeah, and I think building a culture on a team takes a lot of hard work, and the coaches reiterate a lot of things every day in practice, but at the end of the day, it comes down to us players. And we had the opportunity this spring to have a lot smaller of a group. There was 12 of us, and we were able to sit down as a team and kind of talk through what we wanted our team identity to be and what we wanted our team culture to be, because the coaches can tell us a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's what we grasp onto and what we want to build ourselves around. Um, and so I remember early on in the spring, we sat down as a team and kind of talked about that. We had a lot of people with different backgrounds, different experiences coming into this season. And we settled on two main things. You know, we're going to give 100% to everything we do. That doesn't mean we have to hit 100 or hit 1,000 or jump higher every day. It's that we're going to give everything we have for that day every day we're in the gym and that we're going to be grateful for it. We're going to be grateful for every opportunity. We get to touch a ball. We get to be on the court that we get to be together because those moments are limited and each one of them is special. And so those are two things we carried throughout the spring and hope to continue into the fall is that we're grateful to be out there. We give 100% with every moment that we are out there. And so those are things we kind of held each other accountable to in the spring, and it bled into then also the values that the coaches are setting with us and the standards we're holding for ourselves. Yeah, we set those standards, and it's an expectation now instead of an invisible line that's drawn in the sand that may or may not be reached half the time. It's in the concrete. This is our standards. This is our expectations, not for ourselves but for our teammates. And if, like, somebody's slipping, it's not, oh, I'm going to get – hurt because this person told me like hey like you need to step it up but you're right like this is a standard we're a family and we need to act like it and be one hi guys sue, sue marriott with big 10 network uh we're excited to have you guys here today uh we've seen monumental growth in women's athletics over the last couple of years and you know, many would argue that uh, Iowa City has been kind of ground zero with the Caitlin Clark effect and what you saw in women's basketball. How have you guys seen that translate to volleyball in Iowa City? Yeah, you know, everywhere you go, uh, they're talking about our, our league. Um, they're talking about, you know, the level of play and how just in women's sports in general have just exploded. But I think really think volleyball kicked it all off. Uh, last season was, a, I think, a monumental season with just attendance and, and – what we brought on TV, and uh, and I think they piggybacked on us, uh, women's basketball, um, but they did a great job. Um, but yeah, it's just exciting to be a part of it, and it's over. It's long overdue that we're opening the eyes to so many of how athletic this sport is, how fun it is to watch, and uh, you know, and we're selling out arenas, uh, home and away, that 
helps this league grow in volleyball. And, and if an athlete plays this sport, they want to be at the highest level, they want to come to the Big Ten. And, and so I think the world's really taken notice of that. Yeah, it's been amazing to be a part of this athletic department. And women's basketball is huge, obviously, for us here at Iowa. But we also have a lot of other women's sports that are kind of waymakers in what they're doing with field hockey and the first women's wrestling program at the Division One level and things like that. And just, just continuing to be around all these other amazing females and wanting to continue to grow not just our sports, but women's athletics in general. It's been awesome to not just be alongside and watch these people, but grow along with them and see this bigger vision of not just volleyball, but all women's sports. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, um, being around all these incredible women um, and then the platform that we're able to build here at Iowa and being able to inspire the next generation of female athletes, I think that's something that's really incredible. Uh, my name is Jay Zion West, and I'm from the Milton Bronson Elementary School. What do you feel like is a team goal for this upcoming season? Awesome. That's a great question. Um, you know, I think Anna kind of hit on it. Um, we, our theme really is going to be about controlling what we control. So it's about what we do control is giving our very best. And that's mentally, physically, emotionally, just giving our best to the team every day. Uh, the, you might play the game a little better or worse, but that's not what it's about. It's about absolutely giving your best every day. And, and that's the part we control. And we have players that now in our home that we've built uh, that are completely dedicated and committed to actually doing that on a daily basis. It's hard to show up every day and give your absolute best. Uh, but I believe we have the character and the people in the, in the room to do it. You get a mic for this. There you go. Hello, my name is Duke, and I. <laughs> Hello, my name is Duke, and I'm, and I am, from Bronson Elementary School. And my question is, who is your favorite professional athlete? Wow, that's a great Ooh, question. That's a big question. You guys want to answer that one? Since they're pausing. Yeah, Duke, you stumped them. Yeah. Duke stumped us. Yes. Well, Duke, what's your favorite professional <laughs> first? So they can let them think a little bit. Kobe Duke, Bryant. Yeah, Duke that's said the, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. That's that's great. How tall are you? You're in elementary school. <laughs> wow. Be I careful, shot. Jim. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Who's my favorite? I know mine personally, and I know, you know, people might chuckle a little bit. Coach Cry is the greatest athlete I've ever watched or witnessed, and you know, now he's coaching our team try to get another gold, but uh, not only an unbelievable athlete, but just a great human being too. So he's the top of my list. Um, mine slightly random, maybe unexpected, is Tom Brady. I think that man is a great leader as well as a great athlete. And the best players don't just make themselves better, but they make the people around them better. And I think that's the definition of Tom Brady. Um, I'm going to go with Simone Biles. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Um, I just like another great female athlete who's been through a lot and has spoken out about a lot of things and I think that just really resonated with me and the platform she was able to build so I thought that was really cool. Great question. <laughs> Lincoln and then Peter. Uh, Jim, starting the year in Puerto Rico, how did that come about and what do you hope to get out of going a match a little bit further away than typically you may start a season? Yeah, we, you know, we got invited, and uh, it looked like a good way to kick off the season. And, um, uh, you know, we got uh, a team that's really getting to know each other as well. So we thought it would be a good trip for us to go there, learn a lot about each other. Um, you know, we're only playing two matches there that we can really focus on those matches and get some good team time together. We, we thought it was a great way to kick off the season and, um, and get it started. Kind of a two-part question. Coach, you've, you've had success in many conferences. With the new teams coming into this conference, what's been the mentality of your success in the past studying new teams and game film, and how do you implement that with the players? What, what have you two as players seen? How is Coach implementing, okay, here's teams we have not played before, have not seen before, but we still have to prep for them nonetheless? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, this league is just incredible, and uh, the team's coming in so well coached, and. 
you know, playing there in the Pac-12, they they are played some high-level matches. So it's uh, it's what you come for if you're a competitor. You want to play the best. You want to become the best. And so yeah, you know, I, I know personally, I study every every team quite a bit and prepare as much as you can. Um, and they're going to bring a lot to the table. Uh, all four teams, uh, you know, are certainly going to make a lot of noise. Uh, we're going to make it rough for them when they come to Iowa City. Um, but yeah, they they uh, just th again this league now is at the at the peak, and uh, it always has been. But now with these four, it's going to be extremely interesting. I think media is really going to take hold of it from coast to coast too. So that'll be interesting just to see how much this spirals in uh, you know within our league. Yeah, super excited for the new teams coming in, super competitive. Um, Coach does a really good job getting film, preparing us for all the different opponents that we face. But at the end of the day, like we talked about earlier, it's about like what we can control on our side. And at the end of the day, if we just execute our game plan and what we know how to do on our side, then the wins will come. Yeah, see, they can coach. <laughs> they don't need me there half the time, so it's great. She said it all. It comes down to how we prepare and how we're going to prepare for these new teams in the conference. It's the same as we prepare for the teams that are already in the conference. And so we're going to go out there and give them our best shot in every aspect of the game. Uh, Jamie Gordon, over here, Jamie. Uh, American Volleyball Coaches Association. Uh, question for the athletes. Um, this January, there'll be the third domestic professional league. Uh, entering, and I'm just curious what that means for you with having opportunities here in the United States to play professionally, and if either of you have aspirations for that. Um, it's actually really exciting to think about the pro stuff. Uh, the old club that I used to play for is actually affiliated with the association, and Lauren, who's one of the higher ups in there, is actually running a new club here in Iowa. So that's actually really exciting. Um, I haven't thought about playing pro really. Uh, thinking about kind of getting the rest of my life together first before <laughs> um, thinking about that. But if the opportunity strikes itself, I'm sure I won't be able to give it up. So. <laughs> yeah, I think this kind of ties into what we were talking about before with the growth of volleyball and of women's sports in general. Um, I mean, we see the WNBA has kind of exploded this past season and. Now we're bringing another pro women's sport into the U.S. I know we also have the National Women's Soccer League as well, but we're bringing volleyball, which is one of the most loved sports, back into the U.S. And I think it's going to really continue to grow. You have a lot more people that are going to want to play and be able to stay here and have those fan bases continue past their collegiate, like athletes' collegiate careers. Um, so I really think it's going to go well and it's going to continue to grow the sport in numerous ways. Um, kind of as Michelle. I don't like to plan too far ahead, so I'm, we'll just look into this fall, and then we'll decide everything after that. Yeah, and Jamie is a heck of a volleyball coach himself, so uh, um, glad to see you here. Um, you know, I think it's uh, a huge for all our athletes. A lot of our players go on to Europe and play in Puerto Rico, and being able to play at home, I, I know it's ex super exciting. Even for coaches, you know, looking to maybe even go into the pro pro ranks, um, you know, after college. And so uh, it, it, I get the question, do you think it'll hurt college uh, volleyball? And I said, well, I don't think the NFL hurt college football. So I don't think, you know, pro volleyball is going to hurt college volleyball in the, at all. It's just going to bring more and more eyes to the table. I think we have time for one more right here in front. Aaron? Hey, guys. Aaron from Wisconsin State Journal again. Uh, last year, looking to this fall, were you looking forward to playing most this year outside of your home venue? I'm not going to lie. I'll go week by week by the itinerary that gets sent out. So I'm not even sure where we travel to other than Puerto Rico that's coming up. I'm going to be completely honest. But if we play at Ohio State this year, that would be, I like their arena. Theirs is probably the best one to play in. Do we play there this year? Yes. Ohio State. We'll go to Cornell. <laughs> um, I also love going to Ohio State. I loved going to Wisconsin. I think they actually have a really great atmosphere that's just a great, loving volleyball atmosphere. Um, and then another one is I have a lot of family in Nebraska, and I spent all summer in Lincoln, so I love going back there and playing in Devaney. Yeah, I certainly love the next match. This is my favorite, but 
Nebraska, you can't beat that, um, being in that environment. I'd love to win in that building. Uh, but yeah, so many great you know venues in our league. Jim, Anna, Mickey, thanks so much. Right. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Also joined by Kennedy Hill, junior middle blocker who led the Cats in blocks per set with 1.13. Just a reminder, please state your name and affiliation when you ask a question. Coach will allow you a, an opening statement here. Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for having us. We're really excited to be part of uh, Big Ten Media Day today and kick off the 2024 season. Uh, I know we're really, really excited about the upcoming season and all the mysteries that get to unfold a couple days before you start practice. Um, we have a group of incredible student athletes looking to return to campus the next couple days, you know, full of big dreams and aspirations, and we can't wait to compete at the highest level. Question here for Peter. How's it going, Peter Ferrari, Big Ten Plus. Lexa, we'll start with you as we did with last year. A lot of changes in the program with the coaching staff. What's the transition been like so far? You, of course, helping lead the team and adjusting with Coach Tim. Yeah, for sure. Um, the winter and spring were definitely different. You know, you have a group of girls who don't have a coach for a little bit, so authentically and transparently trying to figure things out, but making sure all the girls stay motivated, knowing that when we do that, get that coach, he's going to be an amazing man like Tim. And then when Tim came along, obviously was very respectful about the values we had as a group of girls in our program and honored our, our authenticity, but also made sure that he seamlessly integrated kind of what he was about and his values and things outside of volleyball, like mental practices or mentor, mental health were integrated really soon. And I think it was a great mesh and we've been able to listen really well and be really competitive for him. So it's been great so far. Coach, uh, David Gold, Inside and You, welcome to Evanston. Can you just talk a little bit more about your decision to leave Grand Canyon and why you thought Northwestern was the right fit for you and your family moving forward? Absolutely. Um, you know, there are very few jobs that I would have been interested, quite honestly, um, leaving Grand Canyon. And the opportunity to coach in the Big Ten, the premier conference in women's volleyball, uh, to live in, you know, greater Chicago and Evanston, you know, and be at a world-class institution, uh, it just became a no-brainer. I mean, you get to live in a world-class city, coach at a world-class academic institution in the best conference for the sport I coach. There was no decision-making process at that point. It just it felt like it was meant to be. Lincoln, Lincoln Ariel, Husky Illustrated. Coach, was that, that one of those reasons why? Because you can keep your purple ties? <laughs> You know, purple is fitting. Uh, ironically, my middle child said we could only change if we got to stay purple, so it worked out. Keep them, keep them happy. You were named coach in February. I mean, that you two months behind after Northwestern had their open two. Have you feel like you, you've been had to play catch up a lot? And what's that like? Been learning everyone and kind of figuring out what the Big Ten is about. I feel like anytime you take a new job or a new space uh, that there's always going to be catch up. Uh, it doesn't matter if you take it in December, November, it, that doesn't matter. Um, in terms of catching up on the conference, I mean, I knew the conference. There's Everyone knows the conference, right? It, it's the, the biggest and the best. Uh, in terms of building relationships, I think that's what one of my strengths is. Um, and hiring a staff that would help me do that was a really big premium for myself. Um, having our staff finished out and rounded out, uh, you know, we're just trying to pour into these student athletes and enable them to succeed in, on all aspects. Uh, Kenny and David Gold, inside and you, now being another year older, taking over that main middle blocker spot from Leilani, how do you feel like your voice has grown on a leader in the middle of the floor? Honestly, it grew immediately from the time that I became captain. Um, we 
obviously have gelled as a team since the beginning, so we're open and honest with each other as a team. And Lex and I decided to carry that over with the new coaching staff as well. We've been open and honest the entire way through. And I feel like there's a great feedback loop between all the coaches and all the girls. So I'm excited to continue this on. And like Lex mentioned, Tim and Jeff have been incorporating mental health and openness between the coaching staff and the team that I think will work well with our team style and how we operate. And I can also speak, Kennedy's voice is contagious with our team because of how hard she works. So everyone sees what constant display she's putting on of work ethic every day and wants to work hard and follow her because of that. So she's done an amazing job right off the bat. Thanks, Lex. <laughs> Alexa, have you, uh, you got two new transfers that come from Washington and South Florida, had pretty good numbers there too. What What's it like been developing a connection with, is it Busse or how, how do you say it? Busse, yeah. Busse and, Busse, yeah, Busse and uh, uh, Sophia, how's it like to been to connect with them and learn who they are? Yeah, it's been great. I can start with Sophia. Obviously, she's a fellow older veteran like myself now, so we kind of just immediately clicked based on experience in our time playing in Power Five conferences, but I also have realized kind of over summer training that she's a very strategic thinker like I am, so it's been a huge pleasure so far playing with her and seeing the game in a similar way, and I think we've been able to experiment and have a lot of success from that together. Um, and is just a ball of energy. She's super competitive. She works her butt off every day, but she's also a really good cheerleader and supporter of her other teammates, so her energy is definitely contagious as well, and she's been awesome to be around and works really hard on trying to catch up to the speed of Big Ten Volleyball, and I think she's going to be a huge asset, so. Alexa, last year the team brought in, I think it was six or seven new girls before last season. How has that experience building a team and co coexisting quickly before the season helped this year when you bring in six new players as well? Yeah, that was definitely helpful last year, and um, I think – Again, just like last year, we did a really good job of carefully picking who we were going to join our team. Obviously, all of them are incredibly talented, but they also have a lot of shared values with us as individuals, but also us as a program. So we knew because we took the time to pick really amazing girls as volleyball players, as people, as teammates, and as student athletes, um, it was going to be a really easy kind of crossover. So having them here in the summer, it's been very seamless and they've been really open to feedback and trying to cultivate different shots, different skills that fit into our play set. So it's been great so far and I think all of them fit in really well. So I'm very excited. Coach, just to follow up on that, coming to Northwestern, the academic standards, the admission standards are much higher, especially to bring transfers and non-grad students. What did you learn quickly when you got here about working the transfer portal at Northwestern? Well, as you mentioned, Northwestern is an incredibly uh, rigorous academic institution, but thankfully the student athletes that we were able to pursue uh, met those standards. And, you know, Northwestern, we don't compromise, right? You're going to have to meet our standards academically. You're going to have to meet our standards off the court and our standards on the court as well. And, uh, you know, I think that there's always going to be challenges no matter what institution you're at. Uh, but I have been very fortunate to have a team that helps us with our admissions and things like that, kind of walk me through the process and walk my staff through the steps that it takes, you know, to get a kid admitted to Northwestern, what the standards exactly are and, and how that works. So thankfully we have a great team around us helping us do that. Uh, and we're looking, you know, to rise and meet all those challenges. Hi. Over here. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Alana. I'm with Five Wins. This is a program that's come really close to making the playoffs a couple times. I want to see. I wanted to ask how that's motivating you all and how you're managing expectations and priorities in a year of transition. I can take this one. Um, Lex and I were just talking about how being. Um, underestimated motivates us every single season. Um, like you mentioned, we've come close um, the past couple of years to coming in, into playoffs. And again, that is a motivation for us coming into this year. Tim has made it clear that that is his goal, is to make it to the tournament this year and to make it to the tournament the year after that and year after that. He's working really hard to get recruits um, coming into the next season and the next season. So I'm, you know, 
I'm very grateful to have a coach that is that invested in us and believes in us that much that we um, will make it to the playoffs this season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can say I committed to this university in 2017. So I've been a part and bought into this program and wanting to rebuild it and make the tournament since then. And I think every single year we've come a little bit closer since my freshman year. And while that can be frustrating, it has been incredibly motivating because now that we have a few top 10, top 15 wins under our belt over those seasons, we've started to see what the greatest thing is in a program and that's self-belief. So I think now that we know we are capable to go head to head and beat some of those really good teams, all we have to do is go out and do it on a consistent basis and take care of the teams that we need to beat, and I think we'll be just fine for the rest of the seasons. Corey Sparks of ESPN Wisconsin. Coach, as a new member of the conference, what's one team you're really looking forward to facing? And could you kind of speak on how the addition of the four new programs impacts that level of competition in conference play? Well, adding the four West Coast schools, I think, is great depth for the com conference. I think it brings in four really high caliber volleyball institutions uh, to, again, the best conference in the country. Uh, in terms of what team am I looking forward to playing most, uh, you know, Maryland, because that's the first Big Ten match we play. Uh, for me, it's, it's really every match. Um, you know, I, for me, the most important match of the year is UNLV because that's the first match of the year. Uh, it's, you can't look past people. You can't look down the road. You know, every night in this league is going to be a battle, and you have to show up prepared and disciplined and focused to give your team a chance to win. Um, and I think, uh, I think people get caught up sometimes in looking, oh, this match is going to be really good. This is highlighted or this is primetime TV. You're going to miss the three before it. And if you're not doing your best every night, this conference is going to kick you in the tail. Coach, we have students here from Brunson Academy in Chicago, seventh, eighth graders who are future journalists. So they'd like to ask you a question. Uh, I am Serenity Scott from Milton Brunson Elementary. And I wanted to ask if before you've played a game, have you ever got so nervous that you almost had a panic attack before? That's a good question. That is a good question. And the answer is yes. Um, many times. I didn't play my freshman year. And I remember my first game, my first real game as a sophomore, I think I had something was wrong with my body. There's always something wrong with my body. But it was something <laughs> pretty pretty on the more painful end. And I remember I was going, I was like, I can't let it show. I can't let it show. Like, I need to just perform. And a lot of the time, I feel like injury or non-injury, you have this feeling that I just need to perform. And um, especially being Northwestern, we want to perform every single time so that we can prove everyone wrong. Um, so, you know, and also, of course, for ourselves. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people um, get extremely nervous. I mean, even Simone Biles, you saw that she gets nervous before every single vault she does, every single event she does. She, you see her doing her routine. She has to calm herself down. So I feel like that's a common thread between all athletes. It's like, if you really care, you will get nervous. Yeah. Um, growing up and playing in high school and AAU, I wasn't a huge nerves person. But um, since I got the privilege to start my freshman year, I thought it would kind of be a similar transition, but I remember getting subbed into my first game and I couldn't feel my legs. So what, obviously I touch the ball almost every time it crosses the net. So trying to run without being able to feel your legs and making them feel like they're 100 pounds was a very scary feeling. So if I were to give advice after that, I realized how important visualization is to me. So at the first 19 minute mark for warm ups, I always will sit on the bench and try and run myself through myself doing things successfully, running Kennedy on a gap and getting a kill if that's our game plan, things like that. So visualization has helped me a lot in just trying to calm myself and watch myself do things before I get out on the court and do it so that I know I can do it and I've done it before. Hello, my name is Duke Murray and I am from Bronson Elementary and my question is what is your favorite opponent to play during a season? 
a good question. It is. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think I like playing Illinois. It's the in-state rival, um, and especially at Illinois, they have a really great crowd and a really great student section, so they're really funny. They like to mess with us a lot, um, so I enjoy that, and I think it's also fun to play in those rival environments because as competitive as it is, it kind of takes the edge off a little bit knowing that they're just trying to have fun and they take it serious too, so I really enjoy that and that pressure. I'd say I really like Minnesota. Um, they also have a great crowd, and I also just love the area surrounding the, the school, so we get really good food before as well, really good food after. It's really fun. It's a fun experience. <laughs> All right, pleased to have at the podium the Fighting Illini, led by Chris Thomas in his eighth season. He's led the Illini to four NCAA appearances. He's joined to his right by Caroline Barnes, senior libero, who led this team in digs last season. And to the far right, Raina Terry, graduate student, outside hitter, who is poised to become the all-time Aces leader for the Illini this season. Chris, we'll, uh, we'll let you open it up with a comment. Yeah, you're eight. Great to be here. Uh, thanks again for everyone for supporting our sports. Uh, just came back from Paris, watched the Olympics, and uh, you know the, the game internationally is awesome. I think it's you know you guys help catapult USA volleyball. Um, into, in that regard as well. So I, I do appreciate that from all the media that are here and uh, looking forward to a great season with the team. And uh, as mentioned, you know, we've made several tournament runs. Um, you know, we've been in the top half of the Big Ten, but, you know, it's not good enough for us. And we want to get back to the top. And, you know, last couple of years, we've just kind of been dealt with the injury bug a little bit. And, uh, you know, we get, get another shot. And that's, that's all you can ask for. And, you know, the conference is going to be as, as good as ever. And uh, we, we welcome that challenge. And so, you know, we got uh, just a great opportunity this year to do some really great things on the court. Uh, I'm really happy with how this kind of the spring went and, and how the, uh, the summer, from what I hear, has developed. And I got two great players next to me that are, are going to help us uh, get to where we want to go. So we'll open it up to questions. Just a reminder, please, again, your name and affiliation. And uh, to those on the podium, just make sure you speak into the mic. Thank you. How's it going, Coach? Pete Ferrey, Big Ten Plus. As you stated, you just got back from Paris. Any lessons that you took from your experience there that you brought back to your players or stories or interactions to motivate and say, okay, this is something I saw there, something I learned there, a conversation I had that, you know, is something that's applicable for now on your team? Yeah, I, we got to hang out with Jordan a little bit. They had some time in between their games, uh, which was awesome. So on, uh, after they played their game against Serbia, I got to hang out with Jordan and her family a little bit and just kind of got some inner workings with what was happening there. And I was talking to our players at breakfast, and it's a lot of the things that we talk about as well. And so the lessons, I think the lessons that we learn and kind of either what we see in the court or what we know from behind the scenes is we're on the right track and we're on – uh, you know, the messages that we relay to the team are, are similar to what you hear at the highest level. It's, it's just about getting out there and executing it and trying to be better than you were the year before. And, you know, in our case, maybe a little bit healthier than we, are, uh, than we were the year before or a couple of years before. So um, I think those are the biggest things. And it's always just about perseverance and, and getting back out there. And you got, you know, it's three sets by two points. Marathon ran by a bunch of sprints. Try to be better than the next team and, and uh, by the next point every time you get out there. So a lot of the same lessons, and um, it's, it was an exciting place to be, and as Big Ten's going to be exciting this year as well. Zeno, Joe from Atlanta Inquirer. You talked about how you know the injury bug sort of hit you guys hard the few, past few seasons. How's that doing this year? Yeah, uh, don't comment on you know what's, what's going on just as a generality, uh, but uh, it's been good. I mean, we got a lot more depth this year. That was one of the things that we wanted to do was get more depth, and uh, we did. And we got a lot more players that are able to, to either play different positions. Uh, we got a lot more depth in other positions where we've gotten knocked out in the last few years. And so if something does happen, we do have other players that are able to step in. And the gym's been very competitive uh, from what I understand in the summer. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting in the gym with them. I asked them this morning, what are you guys looking forward to? Just, hey, coaches being back in there and being able to get after it together. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, Brent from the Lincoln Journal. Sorry, Chris, when, uh, when did you get back and how are you feeling? Uh, last night and lots of coffee and fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that like? What's that experience like to, to watch your former players, to watch so many Big Ten players and then 
players as old as Jordan Larson. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's really interesting in that our career kind of expands over a lot of uh, of the national team. And uh, Jen, my wife, played with Jordan back when she uh, when my wife was still in the gym, and Jordan was just a, a young pup in that gym. And uh, so we were able to talk with a lot of them. We coached Justine when we were at Nebraska, and, and obviously Jordan at, at uh, Illinois. And uh, you got so many players that are from you know the Big Ten that are there competing. Uh, you know, it's no surprise to us that are in this conference because we're used to those environments. Uh, you know, in those arenas, it was 10, 11,000 plus each game. It's much like we faced in the Big Ten, and and uh, you know, it's great to see all the Big Ten that's represented. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's just I think volleyball has always been a great sport in, in that regard. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of intertwining either with USA volleyball competing here in the Big Ten. Uh, these players know each other from the club days, uh, so it goes way back. And it, it's it's always just what's really kept my passion for the sport as well. And, and uh, we're just looking forward to keep being a part of it. Aaron Ferguson, Wisconsin State Journal. Caroline, you've returned a lot of serves in your time. Uh, what is the most difficult serve to return and why? Um, I would say a nasty float serve is going to be harder than anything else, in my opinion. You never know where it's going. It has a lot of movement. Um, we have a lot of players in our conference who like Reina included, who have honed that skill a lot. So definitely a lot of pressure and yeah. Lincoln Arneal, Volleyball Mag. Reina, take me through the process of deciding to come back for your last year. I mean, was it a tough decision? What kind of factored into it? What are you looking to get out of this year? Yeah, I, I get this question a lot and my answer is the same every time. It was probably the easiest decision I've ever made in my life. I'm very fortunate that I have such a great coaching staff that made that decision so easy and such great teammates that made that decision so easy for me. But yeah, it was a super easy decision. Chris, you, you added two setters from the portal. When you're looking at the portal, at setters specifically, what are you looking for and what appealed to you about the two that you got? Yeah, we we always want to have you know enough, like I said, positions that we're able to run with and making sure if we did get hit with the injury bug, heaven forbid, that we've got enough positions. But I think every position you're looking for that something that you want out of that position, obviously. And, and for, as setters, uh, you know, we want setters that are good uh, under pressure. We want setters that are good with their location. We want setters that are really great teammates, great leaders, and, uh, and just kind of going through the list of who was available in that kind of the portal opening. Uh, found two great ones in, in uh, Reagan and Vivian and uh, helped support uh, Brooke in her role setting as well. And uh, they, got, they each have a little bit of match ex experience too. And I think that's also great when you're looking at, uh, at setters. Uh, Chris, the Big Ten got a lot bigger. Uh, how does you know these four new West Coast teams affect not only your job in terms of recruiting and scheduling, but your players as well? It makes it, uh, I think, almost I, I, the same. I mean, it's not that these teams are way better, way worse. It's it's the same. You're just going to add four more that are also very good. The difficulty, I think, is going to be for a lot of teams is one, the other question we always got, or maybe last year, how are you going to handle the travel? Well, we didn't know until it actually got the schedule, you know, a couple months ago. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I think it's, yeah, that, you know, a couple trips might be a little bit tougher than the other ones, but it's going to be relatively the same. I think during the season, you're always trying to figure out how much can I practice? How much do we need to rest? How much do we need to recover to get ready for this next big time matches. There's no match that you can just show up and just waltz into and be like, oh yeah, we've got so-and-so tonight, no problem. No, every match you have to show up for, and it's been that way for ever since I've been in it, really. And, and uh, every year the conference has gotten better. Uh, you know, the, the quote unquote weaker teams uh, traditionally have now gotten better too. And, and uh, I just think you're seeing some really great volleyball night in and night out. And so uh, we'll handle it the same. I, the big difference is you don't get a return shot on a lot of them. Um, I think that's going to be the interesting thing moving forward because you could catch someone at the beginning of the season when you're on a roll and maybe there's an injury somewhere and all of a sudden someone's out and that could kind of change, you know, how that rolls. So again, the big time, the big things for us is going to remain healthy. It's going to remain the same thing for everyone and making sure you're hitting those rest recovery cycles well uh, and just be really prepared to adjust your systems and your styles or to execute as best you can any environment that you're in that night because it's you're only going to see them once. Uh, with the exception of a few teams, 
And I think that's going to be probably the biggest challenge a lot of us are going to face besides maybe just the, the amount of travel that we have to do. Alana Goldman, Five Winds. Caroline, you've had sisters play at a very high level. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about how that's pushed you as a player and if your perspective has changed now that you're in your fourth year. Yeah, um, I have two older sisters that played. One was at Marquette, one was at Wisconsin. It was incredible to grow up to watch them play. Um, they are such good role models for work ethic and my one sister is a national championship, how much cooler, or a national champion, how much cooler could that get? So that was an incredible experience to go through with her. I, when I was a freshman, she was a super senior. Um, See twice as they they enter the party, and uh, ESPN and FS1. So, you know, having the different platforms that are getting behind us is is something that's really exciting. Uh, this year we'll have the AVCA showcase, the first serve in Louisville, and uh, the leadership of of Jamie Gordon to, to make that happen. We're excited about being a part of that. And then a few days later, we're playing in Pfizer Arena against Texas and and Stanford. Uh, and so playing in, in big arenas and playing in front of big crowds on, on great networks is something that uh, uh, so many people have worked hard to make that happen, including the, the NCAA committee uh, that in, in all their work to continue to grow the sport. And so we're excited about what is in, in front of us. Uh, we've got two great athletes, and, and Sarah and Devin, who are two of our three captains this year, along with Yulia Orzel. And uh, we're, we're happy to be representing our program and, and uh, university and, and our state to be here. Just a reminder, affiliation and name, thanks. Aaron Ferguson, Wisconsin State Journal. Sarah, how are you feeling? How's your ankle? What's the recovery process like? And what's your timeline? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling good, I'm ready to go for season. And we kind of get to play it by ear, see when I'll be back. Um, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too long, too crazy. Riley Yauk, ESPN Wisconsin. Uh, question for Sarah and Kelly. Devin, Anna, and Yulia are some of the last elder stateswomen of that 2021 national championship team. What does their leadership on this team mean to you guys? I think that their leadership is, is very valued and they know what it's like. They've been in, in both points of it, winning and losing. And to lean on them and to be able to kind of know what it's like on both both sides of it, I think is going to be really good. And, you know, getting into the latter half of things, they know what it takes to get to that point. So I'm really excited to see to see that and how it grows throughout the season. You know, we finished the year, the last five years, ranked in the top five in the country. There's not another volleyball team that has done that. There's not a football team that has done that. There's not a men's or women's basketball team that has done that. So there's been a lot of success there. You know, but um, uh, you know, we were one point at Nebraska. I think we had match point to, to win a match, which would have uh, tied us for our fifth Big Ten title in, in a row. Uh, so this, this group has accomplished a lot. With that said, there's also been a lot of, a lot of disappointing finishes, you know, uh, where we haven't played our best volleyball at the end of, end of the season when our best volleyball is, is required. And, uh, and so we have a lot of players that are that are driven to to, to 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 rewrite the script, I guess, if you will, or change it a little bit going into this year. And the leadership is going to be one of our strength. 
it uh, our experience is, is going to be one of our strengths, and we're going to need that. We're going to need we're going to need players like you mentioned, Devin and and Yulia and Anna, people like Sarah and some of the other people that weren't on the 21 team, but they're very very talented. Uh, we're going to need them to show the uh, the same type of leadership and drive and consistency uh, that some of the players before them took. Uh, you know, of, there's a difference between being really, really good and being really close and being the last one standing, and it's really, really hard to do. There's only, what, been 12, 12 programs in, in our sport that have ever been able to do it, and so – we're excited about this challenge. As much heartbreak as there's been the last final match the last two years, uh, I'm, I'm excited uh, to take this group for uh, one more chance. Uh, Brent from the Lincoln Journal Star. Kelly, you said uh, this summer on a radio interview this might be your most talented team. You know, you've had championship teams. You've got Olympians. I guess can you go through some of your players on the lineup and explain why you think this might be your most – or is your most talented team? Uh, there, there's a lot of experience, a lot of firepower. I mean, our, we've got more arms than probably. Uh, the, uh, we've turned most of our arms from last year. They're just a year experience, so hopefully that, that helps us. Uh, we're physical. Uh, I think we've got some, some really good talented setters. Uh, you know, if we can stay healthy, if we can everybody, – everybody's singing the same song uh, and – uh, then, then we're going to have ourselves a, a chance. But this is as talented as what we've been able to do. Uh, it doesn't guarantee anything. Um, you know, we've got. Uh, you, you know, when the rough waters come, you know how how are you? Are you staying together? And uh, that 21 team was able to stay together when when it got to be really really tough. And uh, we saw that out of Texas last year when they're in the Sweet 16. And I think they had match point against them. And they were able to stick, stick together and find a way and not panic. And uh, sometimes those are easier things uh, said than done. Andrew Banstra, News 3 Now. For Sarah and Devin, kind of going off of what Kelly was talking about a minute ago, with all the success you've had, kind of how much drive have you had this summer coming back to try to get all the way to that mountaintop? I feel like there's just such a sense of urgency and that there's no room for hesitation. If we're going to go for something, we have to go all the way in. And I feel like all of us have that mentality that we need to be the best versions of ourselves if we want to get the goals that we're setting for ourselves. Yeah, I think putting aside kind of everything that gets crazy, life happens, like things happen. And I think leading into this season, no one's worried about that aspect of things. Everyone is worried about this team, what we can do together, and how far we can go. So I think it's really exciting to know that everyone is on the same page there and that we're not letting anything get in our way this year. Pete Ferry, Big Ten Plus. You have two players in the Olympics right now, in Dana and Carlini. What's been the thought of watching them? Do you watch them together as a team and say, you know, that's me one day? Do you sit with the freshmen or the young recruits and say, being part of this program can get us to that point. And do you, when you watch it together, are you taking notes? Are you comparing and contrasting with each other uh, with your former teammates? I think a lot of the games have been at you know various times, so it's hard to get everyone together to do that. But we love having having dialogue about this kind of stuff. You know, we'll watch it and and be able to just talk about you know what things worked well for them, what things didn't work well, and to be able to see people who have been in our jersey up there, it makes it very realistic for a lot of us just to be able to to look towards that once we you know finish our college careers. Yeah, seeing Dana um, in the Olympic jersey is really inspiring to me because I've looked up to her ever since before I even committed to Wisconsin. She's a big reason why I came here. And to see her living out her dreams is just adding fuel to my fire to feel like I played with her. I know what she did to do to get to the spot that she's at, and I can do those things too. Aaron from the State Journal for Sarah and Devin. Um, obviously, there's a lot of experience up front and some youth at center in the back row and Sage is returning as well. Um, just how do you kind of blend the inexperience with the experience? I think it's about keeping everyone on the same page. I think we do a really good job about having the new people coming in, understanding that they aren't new, they aren't young. They are here to bring what we recruited them for. 
And there's a lot of value in that. There's a lot of value in having fresh minds, someone who maybe doesn't see or know all of our details to start, you know, because we can we can learn from that too. It's great to have all those new perspectives. So I think um, having a little bit of both of, you know, bringing them under our wing and getting them into our Wisconsin culture, but also learning kind of what they bring to the table outside of that. It's instilling confidence in our younger players because I know coming into an elite gym like ours is kind of intimidating and just letting them know like we're all on the same team, like we're all family, we're all sisters and we've got each other's back and I know you're here for a reason and just instilling that confidence in them. Lincoln or Neil Huskers Illustrated. Sarah, you got some rings on, what are you, what are you wearing there? Just, just a couple, we have three rings. Um, we have the national semifinal from last year, 2022 Big Ten championship and then the AVCA first team all-american ring and then Deb has yes I have 2022 big 10 championship uh, 21 uh, national championship 2020 big 10 and national championship again but with the big 10 on the side and our final four ring Sorry, yeah. Sarah talks with her hands more sorry I didn't see yours Deb. Oh, no, that's, uh, I just had to make sure you saw them so I <laughs> held them up uh, to kind of build off that last question what have been have you had a chance to work with Charlie what are your impressions of her and what, what she can bring to the team um, I'm really impressed with what I've seen with her this summer getting in the gym and just working on our connection um, she's just really talented and I'm really excited to see how um, with Kelly's coaching and just being around other Badgers like myself and Sarah like how she'll blossom into the player that I know she's capable of being yeah I think it's just fun to watch her she has such a calming demeanor when she's on the court and she kind of she knows what she's doing she knows what her goals are and she does a really good job at executing that so it's a lot of fun to watch and I'm excited to to continue getting on the court with her Kelly if you have a if you have a talented roster what do you think will be some of the big factors that determine how successful the team is this year I mean health is always a, a factor right and that was that was one of the things that uh, you know Nebraska was able to do is is you know, uh, one of their starting outside hitters went down for, for the season, and they were able to handle that adversity and continue to go and finish 19-1 in, in, in the league. And so adversity is going to hit. It always hits. And how are you when when it does? And uh, are you able to stay together? It, um, you know, we you know mentioned earlier just it's uh, – you know, I think one of our strengths will be our diversity in, in a lot of different ways, very diverse uh, team, probably as diverse as I've ever had. Um, and we want to celebrate that. But, you know, the, we talked about it. It's every player kind of brings their own talent, their own uh, m musical instrument, I guess, you, uh, if you will, to the party. But you've got to be playing the same song. Uh, even though everybody is uh, has a different instrument, and uh, we've not always been playing the same song, and uh, and when the margins are so thin, like they are in an elite conference like this, and it's about ready to get gnarlier with these four West Coast teams coming in, uh, you better handle adversity, and you better be singing the same song. Corey Sparks from ESPN Wisconsin here. Uh, for all three of you, a lot of teams can manage to put together a good season here and there and maybe twice in four and five years. This program's going on a decade plus of remarkable volleyball, especially the last five years. From each of your perspectives in this program, what's the key to sustained excellence? I feel like just strong leadership over the years and upkeeping our culture and just letting people who come into the program know what's what and understanding the foundation that's been set and upkeeping that. I feel like Sarah, Eula, and I are doing a good job of letting their freshmen know like what the standard is, what our culture is like, and I don't know, just having such a great and vibrant culture at Wisconsin is has been big key of part of this. Yeah, the culture carrying through that that long period of time is a testament also to all the recruiting that is being done because when you're getting recruited here, everything is laid out on the table. This is how we operate. This is how we do things. If you don't like it, maybe it's not for you, but this is this is how we do things. So when you come here, you know you're going to have to work your butt off. You know you're going to have to fit into the culture. You know you're going to have to grow your character, your skills, all of these different things. You know you're going to have to push yourself to do that. And guess what? It's not going to be easy. And that's the people that love this sport and that's the people that love to do that here. And so I just I love that we have so many people that have done that year in and year out. Word. <laughs> 
Andrew Banster with News 3 Now. Kelly, you mentioned the addition of the four teams and the expansion of the conference. What challenges and maybe advantages even does that bring for you guys? Hmm. Well, I mean, they've, they've won championships, right? And, uh, you know, you, you look out at the, the history of, uh, of those teams and the Hall of Fame coaches that they've had in the past and uh, the fan basics. I'm sure for each of them have high expectations, and uh, you want to be a part of of something where it matters. It matters to everybody. It matters, and and I know right now you, it can it can get lost that that um, that football and maybe basketball is the only sport that matters right now. Certainly, when you're when you're opening up about any article, it certainly is is more that than it's ever been. And, but we have choices right now of, um, of which way we're gonna go in different sports at, at either of these schools. And, and uh, you know, it's, it certainly seems like um, uh, volleyball is, is being leaned into as much, if not more, uh, from so many administrators and fan bases and, and uh, where the allocation of resources are and um, which is going to be important and uh, you know I, I'm excited I've never I've never played at UCLA I'm excited about that there's not too many places in my career I've not competed at that's one of them uh, and uh, you know I'm excited to go back to those other three programs because the, the, they're awfully talented with some really good young coaches leading the way Alana Goldman five wins um, Devin and Sarah, you've both been to this event before. I wanted to hear about how this event has grown in your eyes in the last couple of years and what it means to be on the forefront of growing women's college volleyball. Yeah, I think um, I was a part of the first Big Ten two years ago, and I think seeing how much more is being poured into this from the aspect of media, from the aspect of where we stay, from the aspect of how much everyone can, can do for this sport, I think has been really exciting. And to see it now, I'm like, wow, they've definitely stepped up their game. And it's exciting just to see people are paying attention to this now. People are able to watch this when they want. And I just think it's it's really cool and exciting to be a part of something like this because I've loved volleyball since I was 12 years old. And to be a part of something that's growing so much and to be able to share that with so many people, I think is just, it's, it's really an honor. Yeah, um, I was here last year, but I was working it uh, with the mini mic, and now that they have, <laughs> they have junior reporters, I think, and I think that is so cool to get young kids in here getting involved in volleyball, because now they've, I've sat and I talked with them for a little bit. They're a little shy, obviously, but getting to talk to them and having them be like, oh, am I going to see you later? Like, now they have someone to look up to and a reason to watch volleyball and to tell their friends, and that's just a good a good thing for them to get involved in early, and I'm, I'm really excited for that. Which side of the mic did you like better? Uh, I, like, I like talking into it. <laughs> but I didn't mind holding the mini mic. It was cute. <laughs> Kelly, how was, uh, how was your trip to the Olympics? What were some of the top moments of that trip? First time I've ever been to the Olympics. First time I've ever had an Olympian. You know, we've got, we've got two there. So it was, it, it was cool. It was emotional. It was, it was awesome. There were so many of their former teammates that also made the trip over. So it was, uh, I mean, it was incredible. We saw four indoor games, uh, two on the women's, two on the men's. Three of those four win five sets. We saw USA Beach uh, under the Eiffel Tower at night when the sunset was going and, and the glistening of, of the Eiffel Tower. And we saw uh, a day of gymnastics where there wasn't a single American there and it didn't really matter. It's uh, the pride of, uh, and the joy that is just uh, uh, around for everybody. I mean, it just, it was such a, just a great vibe. I'm fired up to, for it to get to uh, Los Angeles in four years. Hopefully we'll have some players, but if not, I can guarantee uh, uh, me and my family will be there. One final question. Uh, Ethan Casales, Dignity Volleyball. Sarah, you and Carter won silver with USA Volleyball in the Dominican Republic. What was that experience like? And also since I cover Penn State, what impressed you about Jess Merzik's performance? Yeah, I think going to USA and being able to play with a whole bunch of other college athletes who are 
just as driven, just as high level, who want the same thing, I think is really an awesome experience. And also to put a face and a personality behind the name that you play against every single time, I think was just a really, really cool way to just get to play some more volleyball and get to play some more sixes, because that's always an awesome experience. Um, I think Jess was great when we were out there and you know getting to learn from other outside as well as Eva Hudson I think getting to learn you know how they do things how they do things differently than maybe you do because every outside every position is going to do things a little differently because different people have different skills um, I think it was just really cool to you know get to talk with them um, about how we operate versus how they operate and how um, they kind of go into games and how they see things because I see games as something that's you know very high level I'm a high motor and you know maybe Jess and Eva see it a little differently so I thought it was really cool to just get those different perspectives as well as just represent USA like that is always I'm just so honored to do that every time Kelly Sarah Devin thanks very much appreciate it thanks. good luck thank in the you. season thank you I offer in her fifth season on the banks Rutgers had their most wins in more than a decade last season. Uh, to her right, Allie Morellis, a junior setter in her first season in the Big Ten after transferring from Old Miss. And to the far end, Zora Hardison, the sophomore middle, who entered the starting lineup for the final 10 matches of 2023. Coach, I'll, I'll let you have an opening statement. Hello. Well, I'm so excited to be here for our third annual Big Ten Media Days. It's so exciting. And I um, chose these two to join us this year. Um, for a lot of reasons, but they really represent what I think this season will become. And Allie obviously making the commitment to Rutgers um, in January, and Zora having had to step into some big shoes at the end of the season when our um, starting middle blocker um, was injured after we played Illinois. So I thought they were great representatives of the program. And again, I thank the Big Ten for allowing us this opportunity to be in front of you all. We'll open it up for questions, and just a reminder, please state your name and affiliation. Let's start with Peter. How's it going, Peter, for a Big Ten Plus? Allie, let's start with you, the transfer. Talk to me through the process. How did you end up at Rutgers? What was the decision? And, you know, if there's future players, whether they're recruits thinking about going to Rutgers, you know, how can that influence their decision? Yeah, for sure. Um, so my experience was very quick. I came in, I entered in December, so I had about three weeks to really figure it out and kind of pick it. And it really just came down to the culture. And it's really hard to find culture just on a visit, but you could just tell that these were genuine people. And you could tell that they had a, um, a future that they wanted to build and they were doing and taking all the right steps to get there. So I think for me, it was coming into an environment that had that competitive mindset, had a group of girls that really wanted to win and knew that they could. And for me, it was definitely tough, but I also was recruited by Caitlin um, when I was, I think, 16 during COVID. And it was just a tough situation during then, but I knew them from that point. And so using that to my knowledge, I knew that they were great people and they saw something in me that young. And so for them to want me again, two years later, it's like they knew that they saw something and I was becoming the person that they wanted. So it just came down to family environment, came down to the people. And I think New Jersey is a really great place to just have a college experience and just grow up there. and kind of learn new things because it is definitely different from where I'm from. But overall, it's just a really great experience, and the people is what makes it for me. I'm not going to lie. Ali's dad made me work for it a bit. <laughs> so yes, it was a yes. quick process, but um, and he's a business guy. So I basically had to create a business plan of what our uh, future for the next few years with Ali in it would look like. Yeah. And I, I guess I guess I uh, it worked. passed the test. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. You say that again? So you had to create a business plan? Well, or he just wanted to know. And again, like any parent, he cared about Shut his up, daughter. Mike. She was you know, transferring from a previous institution. And so there's always pros and cons to where she was coming from. And, and what you're walking into, no place is, is perfect. But sometimes in the transfer process, um, it can be so fast. It just seems like the grass is greener wherever you visit or wherever you go. And so he just wanted to be sure that we were checkmarking all the boxes. That was the best institution and program for his Yeah, and like daughter. on my visit, my dad made her like write out a whole entire like little sheet of everything that I wanted. Shout out my dad, but um, yeah. My so business degree came in handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so everything was written out on my visit, so it was great. Shout out Mike Burrells. That's awesome. That's awesome. Shout out Lincoln. Mike. Uh, Lincoln Arneal with Husky Hill Strayed. Kayla, talk about, can you talk about the significance of that Minnesota match last year, what it meant for like the growth of the program to get a rated win, and how, how do you try to make that happen more often? 
I believe in this room before I talked about our goal sheet and how we had a list of small wins that we wanted to meet and trying to cross these off every year and to ultimately get to the big goal of making the NCAA tournament, winning a Big Ten championship, winning an NCAA championship, which has to be the end goal. Right? So um, last year, I believe that the win versus Minnesota, it proved to, and not only proved, but also showed the world of what we are capable of as a program. and. There was a lot of questions about this program, if it was possible, if we should be in the Big Ten, can we be competitive within the Big Ten, um, what, where is the ceiling for Rutgers Volleyball, and getting that first ever top 25 win, I think really showed, it blew the, the ceiling off. So it's just exciting for the team. It was motivation for the players, I think for our future recruiting classes, and just kind of showed that my vision and reality was coming into fruition and that we still have um, future opportunities to get wins like that. Alana Goldman, Five Wins. Caitlin, you've spoken a bit about recruiting more within the United States. I wanted to hear a bit more about that process and then to the player's point, how that affects culture as you bring in new people. So it's, it's not unknown that when I first took over the Rutgers program, it had been significantly internationally um, dominated within the roster. And so I felt that it was important in order to build the Rutgers brand within the United States, we needed to recruit domestic players. There is an importance to grow a fan base within the United States. And now that we have put effort into recruiting um, domestically, we're able to really have a true audience wherever we go and wherever we play, and not only from parents, but also from boosters and other friends. I will never eliminate our international recruiting. As you'll see this year, we have three or four international players, excuse me, but I can't think of exactly the right number, four, um, sorry. <laughs> um, but you know, they are, Rutgers is a, a true destination for an international student. We're, we're a 45 minute train ride from Manhattan. So it's a true destination for any student, but having three major airports so close by, it is interesting for an international student. But I have felt that I wanted to use the relationships that I had and that my staff had with um, domestic clubs and, and we've been very successful doing so. Uh, I recently was told by a club in a Big Ten, I won't say which one, but a Big Ten state that I was turning that state into New Jersey. So it <laughs> was interesting. That happened to be Nebraska, but no. <laughs> This question is for Zora. Um, you're one of the youngest people here this whole week, these whole two days. What's the experience been like for you so far, getting the call midway through last season, finishing strong, and now being amongst the elite of the Big Ten? Uh, so honestly, my team is very amazing. They helped me adjust really quickly. I think having that experience has helped for this season coming in, helping with like freshman, our freshman Natalie with her adjustment, because she'll be playing as well. So I think, honestly, it's just helped our game improve. So where is one of the most coachable athletes that I have personally? Aaron Ferguson, Wisconsin State Journal. Allie, what is it like transitioning to a whole new team and having to learn players' tendencies? And for Zora, how has she, I guess, gotten acclimated to the team and, and really handled that job? Yeah, I would say um, coming in, it's definitely stressful. It's, it's scary. It's a new experience. But for me, I'm just very blessed to have a group of girls on this team that just want me to feel comfortable. Um, and I think a lot of people just say that, but it's, it's true. The whole time, they've made me feel at home. They've always reached out. They always like wanted to get to know me. And I think knowing that these players believe in me, it makes it easier on the court. Um, and so when I felt that family environment off the court, once I was able to play, I felt that I could really help this team and I could be confident and I could use what I've learned in the SEC to bring it here to this team and see what, what works and stuff. Um, but yeah, I would just say that it's definitely different and it's scary because it is, at least for me, across the United States, but it's been nothing but home for me. And I think these, these girls are just so incredible and no one really sees it when they're playing, but some really, really good, good group of girls and it's made my adjustment just so much easier. Uh, Allie, she's such a bubbly person, like overall. So finding that connection in person helped a hundred times, a hundred times more just in the game playing with her. She made it easy to connect with her as a setter and hitter, and she just done an amazing job adjusting to the new team. 
And from a coaching standpoint, I think having Abby Dietering on staff with us, who has set in the Big Ten, I, I believe that was a, a big reason why Allie chose Rutgers, was that she was going to be trained under Abby um, in a setting role. And so their connection and the relationship that they were able to develop over the spring, it's much easier to bring in a setter transfer in January than it would be in June, because you have the ability to create that dynamic throughout the spring. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, real, real quick, I you guys have Washington and Oregon back to back on the schedule this year. I was just kind of curious, so what, what do you think that's going to look like for you guys going out there literally coast to coast and, and playing on both sides of the country? I think it's going to look awesome. <laughs> uh, we, we have an airport 25 minutes away from us. I mean, Newark Airport is so easy to get to. And we've looked at all different travel options, whether it was charter, whether it was um, commercial flights. And I have a very good friend um, who also coaches at Oregon State. So I asked her about what the travel was like between Washington and Oregon. And, um, she was like, okay, we'll do this and then drive this time. And, you know, so to make it all easier. So I've used my resources wisely in that sense. But it's going to be new for everyone, right? It's a first year. So there's going to be a learning curve. And it's actually my first time ever out to Oregon. So I'm really excited about the opportunity to play out there. Um, I've been to Seattle before. I've never played at Washington, but I've been to Seattle before. So I think our players are really excited about it. Um, obviously, USC and UCLA are coming and playing um, in New Jersey. So that's going to be, you know, their challenge. But... At, Big Ten travel is is tough whenever. Just you know, Oregon might be easier to get to than Lincoln, Nebraska. So, or you know, who knows? But we'll find out this year. So, coach, players, we have some students here from Brunson Academy in Chicago. They are aspiring journalists, seventh and eighth graders. They have a question for you. What are your long-term goals, and where do you see yourself in the world of volleyball in five years? Um, I'll go first. I think um, that's a great question, first off. But, yeah, I think it's just up from here. I think women's volleyball has slowly grown over these past few years, and now seeing pro volleyball in the States is just a really good step for us. So I think, at least for me, um, now, I mean, it could change. But for now, I definitely want to try and play pro in the States and just keep getting women's volleyball out there. Um, and yeah, definitely my long-term goals is just pro volleyball and just continuing to finish these last two years really strong and just making Rutgers Volleyball just a bigger name and more fans and just getting our name out there. So, yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh, personally, I don't see myself going pro, but for the rest of the years that I'm here, I see myself being a leader and taking like titles, if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, what is one memorable game for you? Uh, definitely Nebraska last year. I had a lot of self-doubt, you know, coming into the Big Ten and playing, but I think I showcased my skills. And to be able to bring that this season, I'm very excited to. Uh, Kaylin, you have a little more challenging non-conference. I've been playing Miami, uh, Colorado, Arkansas, LIU, also made the tournament last year too. Was that and intentional and what do you hope to gain out of that, that type of schedule? It was it was very intentional. We we looked at scheduling this year very differently than we had in the previous years. Um, last season it was to pass that double digit mark which we had done and now that we have again accomplished some of the smaller goals that we had set for ourselves which felt really big at the time now we need to really elevate our level of competition. So um, we were the largest differential team between a a Pablo ranking and an RPI last year. So it was almost a 75 point difference. So I wanted to close the gap on there. So playing the RPI game a little bit more closely so that if we are in contingent or have the ability to potentially make the NCAA tournament, we want to have that opportunity in front of us. And we weren't necessarily playing teams in the past that would have given us key wins outside of conference. So we wanted to start off the season with a tougher competition and then kind of slowly like uh, waiver, you know, into the Big Ten, but um, I think our players are excited for the challenge. It's a goal of mine to always play in front of the hometown of players on the team at least once in their career. So Krista Dooley is from from Dallas, and we have some other players from Texas as well. So it's just a good opportunity to get in front of their hometowns too. Hi, 
Uh, Coach, I've recently talked to uh, Coach Jojo over at mm -hmm. St. John's, and one thing she said is, you know, you don't understand how much the sport is growing in the East Coast. And you mentioned earlier in terms of not, quote, per se, having to get international recruits. Talk me through the process, though, of talking with the younger players in, you know, that are in club earlier on wanting to stay in that Northeast area. So I love Jojo. <laughs> um, she's a wonderful mentor. and. You know, she was the first one. I was a player, and she's like, I think you could coach one day. So I give a lot of my career to her. But we sold out our camps this year for the first time. We hosted our first overnight camp as a staff this season, and we had almost, how many girls, 175 overnighters. We had multiple um, day camps, and so that was a big growth from this last season. And New Jersey volleyball is really big. It's a mission of mine. I have a six-year-old daughter, so it's a mission of mine for her to have a quality club to play at when she goes to play. Um, and so my staff is really involved in the satellite camp uh, arena as well. So we've been going out to high schools in the area and running satellite camps in order to promote not only at the varsity level, but also the JV and the middle school level and try and generate interest that way. And then from a marketing standpoint, a lot of our um, game marketing um, strategy is around youth. So things like last year we did a superhero night, and and this year, um, you know, I don't know, bounce houses and things like that that are just drawing in families into to the arena. Because I do feel that if we can get players in a Rutgers volleyball jersey much earlier on than their junior of high school, that interest is going to only grow the program. So um, I'm excited about just. First time ever, I was walking through the mall and I saw someone in a Rutgers volleyball shirt and I asked to take their picture with them. <laughs> so there I was like, okay, snaps for that person. But yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Caitlin, you, you mentioned this checklist that you have of small wins, right? That you, how much progress have you made against that checklist? Where are you at and where do you think you are in getting the program to where you want it to be? So many things have been crossed off that list. I mean, we've, we've achieved a lot of the goals. Top 25 win, all Big Ten attacker, all Big Ten setter. Um, you know, we didn't finish in last place in the Big Ten. I mean, there was, there was a lot of things that needed to be checked off that list. And like I said at the very beginning of this press conference, we were in the process of proving to people that we could be competitive. And so those things were needed in order to create, um, to lessen the doubt. And now that those, those goals have been achieved, now it's just about showing people that we can win. And so I'm really excited about this season because the opportunity is in front of us and I've and they have put together a wonderful team. And again, the culture, as you can hear, is extremely strong. And I think we're going to really shock some people this year. How did you get into coaching for volleyball? Oh, boy. Um, well, I, as I mentioned, my college coach kind of put the plan at the seed, but I actually started working um, in Manhattan after my, I graduated from college. I worked in a public relations agency and I handled um, for Johnson & Johnson and Ulta. So I handled PR and um, I really missed volleyball. So I started coaching part-time at the Fashion Institute of Technology at FIT. And um, after that, I moved back home to Pennsylvania to help my mother with her business. And I started coaching in high school, and my high school team did extremely well, and I got offered an assistant coach at Bucknell, and then Lehigh, and then, and I, and I tend to take positions that aren't always, um, people are scared of, right? And they're programs that need to have growth, and they're programs that maybe people are, and other people are like, okay, that could be a career killer. And, but putting a lot of energy and faith into that. If all the pieces are in place, if the administration is in place, and if um, the resources are in place in order to be successful, that why not? Why not the LaSalle's of the world? Why not the Rutgers of the world? And, um, and I think these players, when I recruit them, we had that exact same conversation as to why not. And so it's, I love coaching, and um, I really love seeing the growth of my players, and um, it's just a really fun, fun career path. Final question. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the inroads you've made in Nebraska. You have to replace Madison Chitty for your starter. One of those people that could replace her is Kenzie. Mm -hmm. What kind of opportunity is, does Kenzie have in front of her? What do you like that she brings to the team? 
Kenzie has Michigan huge State opportunity Spartans, in front of her. She was uh, to the able podium. to play in a DS Leah role Leah Johnson, her third really season, led the Spartans to their most wins last season since 2019. Uh, Evie Duzema, Kenzie junior outside, played in all 31 and matches. And, and Taylor Preston, on the far end, the junior She's outside hitter, averaged 3.25 kills per season last year at Oklahoma. Coach, opening statement? Yeah, thank you. where she spent most of the time One, thank you all for being here and taking time to highlight this event. And she's the oldest of four daughters, four girls. And so she has that, and, uh, and she's super being in the organized. Big Ten to lead she's definitely in that capacity is very special. Uh, taking on the so thank you. role, and you guys and let's can continue speak to that as well. But um, I'm excited to what see like what to her potential is. You know, I get to bring sit in, in this seat um, with Dutton two as a young women this year too, who and she's are here on behalf of their entire team. And so she's a quality candidate. And we also have some of our classmen who have gone between both being outside hitters and and so what is one season will be a lifetime of memories. You know, it's Kenzie's for the this summer. I'll tell you. They've been putting in the work to create those memories. Kenzie, I think Kenzie is Every day I pass by the gym and so there's a new practice plan on the board. Um, they may be running, they may be conditioning, they might be lifting, they might be practicing as I go into my office and they're on the court. And the amount of work and intensity that they're investing in one another without anyone else there is phenomenal. And I'm lucky to be sitting here alongside them because on day one, I just get to show up and take over where they've left off. And that's a coach's dream. We'll open it up to questions. And just a reminder, please state your name and affiliation. Lincoln Arneal, Huskers Illustrated. Uh, Leah, uh, Taylor was kind of a revelation last year. I don't know if a lot of teams knew what to expect with her coming from an international You're department. welcome. Thank you. How, how do you prepare her for the second go around now that teams are yep. aware of her potential and what she can do? So it's not as much as preparing Taylor, or excuse me, Tayla any different than any player moving into their second season. I think the second year is the hardest year for anyone, uh, for athletes, and I think it's the hardest year as a coach. Um, I'm glad it's over. No, it was great. But Tayla is just more mature now, and I think for her, it's not like growing up in the U.S. where you're you see it and you hear it every day. The noise isn't as loud. And so she's just on a path and then we're just gonna keep her there rather than focusing on what to expect. But what my job is to surround her with good pieces and make sure there's more compliments to her game so that she can't be the only known target. And I'm excited, uh, especially with these two women next to me, what they're going to do to provide Taylor that support and multiple players in our gym doing just that. Coach and student athletes, we have uh, some seventh and eighth graders from yeah. Brunson Academy who are aspiring journalists. They'd I like love to that. ask you a question. My name is Lonnie Jackson, and I go to Mr. Brunson. Um, I have a couple questions for you guys, but I'm going to start with one. So basically, um, when growing up, like, what was your favorite sport before volleyball? I started with basketball. My dad got me into basketball, and I loved it and played all the way until my senior year of high school. I even had the opportunity to go on and play basketball in college, but I love volleyball too much, and I knew I could play at a bigger level and play more intense um, when I chose that. Um, me growing up, I actually used to do swimming, um, and then my sister started playing volleyball, and I loved watching her play volleyball. I fell in love with the sport, so then I switched and I started playing volleyball, but swimming was my childhood sport for sure. What do you believe to be strengths as an athlete? Strengths as an athlete? Is that the question? Okay, um, I think one thing for sure um, is to, well, one, be resilient, um, two, confidence, um, and three, just not worrying um, about your mistakes. I think trusting the process is a huge thing, especially as athletes. Um, you have lots of ups and downs, lots of roller coasters throughout your journey, but I think, you know, you know your end goal, you know what you want to achieve, and I think just trusting yourself, uh, trusting the people around you to make you better, um, I think those are three things that, at least for me, I strive to um, see as strengths in my life. I would say one thing, especially in our gym, is we talk about our values, serve, grow, and honor, and the strengths of our team as athletes is that we are not out on that court alone, that we're always working every single day to serve each other, and we're not just trying to get better on our own and improve our own game, but we're also trying to help our teammates, whether they're playing above us or below us or they're on the court or we are on the court. 
we are always helping out each other to improve their own game. Okay, that was a good answer. <laughs> Just saying, write that down. <laughs> That was a good answer. Hey, I want to comment to you guys, the students that are here. It takes a lot of courage to show up and do something like this. And I hope you recognize how special that is that you arrived today to put yourself out there, to be courageous, and to enjoy this moment. So we're proud to be doing it with you. Thank you. How's it going, Coach? Be for a Big Ten Plus. Uh, this question's for Taylor. Uh, talk me through the conversation and the movement to get yourself to be a Spartan because, you know, I've known Coach now for three years and as a media member, she's always been kind and to us and willing to talk to it. What was it about her, particularly in her style, that brought you to Michigan State? You know, I think, um, first off, um, aside from Coach for a second, Jake, our assistant coach Jake, was the very first person to reach out to me when I first entered the transfer portal. And I think that right off the bat just showed me how much they were dedicated to uh, me and just how much they cared about me and wanted me. Um, and then that obviously led to me talking with Coach Johnson. And, I mean, it just the person she is and the coach she is, I could just tell um, how much, you know, this team meant to her, uh, you know, the goals she had, um, the competing, like, the mindset, everything. I was just – it was something that I was so eager to be a part of. And, um, you know, being able to just talk to her as, you know, a person person, not even just as a player, um, it's something super special and something that I, I just was super attracted to. Um, and I absolutely loved it, and I loved every second being here and being coached under her, so. Same. <laughs> uh, hi, Connor. Yeah. Hi, Connor Gilly with uh, Impact 89. Uh, so you mentioned a little bit about uh, your second year, and uh, you said last year and again today that it was the hardest, it's always the hardest going for you. Um, made it through it, lots of big improvements mm -hmm. uh, for this team, and I was wondering if you learned anything from last season and uh, what you're looking to carry into this season? Yeah, good question. Uh, it's interesting because I think that reflection happens in December, January, so I'm a little removed from the immediate because uh, you build that into your spring training, right? So when I walked out of the fall, a big emphasis for the spring for us was in point management. When you watch Big Ten Volleyball, you see very few mistakes. There are no, you, no one's giving you points here. All right, there are no friendly whoops, here's yours, enjoy. You know, everybody is sharp, the volleyball is clean. And so we spent a lot of time in the off season focused on our point management. Now from year two, the big picture, what did we learn? Um, and I, I've said this once today, but there's a cadence to how you do things. And you don't want any match to be bigger or more important than the next because they all matter. If your goal is postseason, and then to make a run, every single match matters. It doesn't matter what name is on that jersey uh, because we are the only name that, we, that matter to us, right? It's Michigan State. And so building a cadence where everything is normalized, that one thing isn't more or less than the other, but each equally important, and it's about who shows up in our jersey day in, day out. Thank you. What is something that like that motivates y'all like every game to like win that game? I would say my teammates. Um, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day, I'm always playing for them, so that motivates me. And I'd also say my family because I am super close with my family, and that's why I chose to stay close to home. And when they come to support me, I just want to do the best I can and make them proud. Um, I would absolutely agree with that. My family and my teammates, for sure. Um, I would honestly give the same response. But to add to that, I would say the fact that we all have, you know, the same end goal to make postseason, that's something that motivates all of us every single day in the gym to work harder, reach that goal. Um, so I think the fact that, you know, we all have that same end goal, we all know what we're, 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 we're here to do. And so, um, yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> What is a personal goal for this upcoming season? A personal goal? I would say for me personally, um, now switching primarily to the middle is to be the best middle blocker on my team, to have my coach rely on me to be a really dominant force up at the net. Um, I would say to have um, one of like the be one of the biggest point scorers on our team and in the Big Ten as a whole.
Evie, uh, how, Evie. how? Evie. Evie, sorry, That's thank okay. you. Evie. You're good. Evie. Evie. Um, thinking last, last year, that Penn State match, where does that rank in the matches that you've been a part of, and how do you use that to motivate and carry over into this year? I mean, that one, that was, that was a good, good feeling. <laughs> I, I know the entire team um, and all of the fans and our families. Just that, has, that place has a special, that match has a special place in our heart. Um, just because it was such a well-fought battle on both sides. And to come out on top with, against a ranked team like that, um, as we're building our program back up, it was surreal, and it was just showed the amount of effort and work we've really put into this team and how much more we can accomplish this year. And we're hoping to do it a million times over again. So, <laughs> Coach, you talked about getting things all figured out in your second year. Well, this year you got a West Coast trip to figure yeah. out too. Jeez. How, how do you prepare for that and kind of what do those four new schools bring to the Big Ten? Yeah, so it's back to the cadence. I'm going to say that again. Um, they're just further away. They're not that different. Um, they all have a unique style of play, just as any school, just like non-conference. Like when we prepare for non-conference, this is the team we haven't seen very often uh, or at all. And so you're preparing for them in a different, through a different lens. You don't have history in the back of your mind. You don't have that matchup last year where you made an adjustment and you know that can work again. So you have the ability to lean on preseason um, game prep and to know what's worked for you through preseason to then carry you into conference play when you see an opponent you've never seen before. And then second, there it's just a game. It's just one game. And we'll play that game in that moment, in that time zone, in that city, in that state, and then we'll do it again. And if we can keep things normal like that, and though, don't get me wrong, we're going to go you know, sightsee a little bit, and we're going to make the most of it because that's what we do in our program. We don't just get on a plane and sit in a gym all day. Like we have life experiences and we have memories to make. But when it's game time, we're prepared because that's what we do every day. Hi, Hi. Alana Goldman, Five Wins. Um, Evie touched on it very briefly, this idea of changing positions um, and to be able to support your team. Not the first player on uh, to come in today with that sentiment. So coach, how are you thinking about the versatility of players in the recruiting process? And then for our athletes, how does that change the energy um, in the competition in the practice gym? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll start. I think as we're recruiting, it, there's one thing that's important to me. Every player has to have something elite. So when I'm recruiting you, what is your X factor? What's the thing that right now you do at the most elite level in your age group or in the region in your position? then what's the next best thing that we think we can develop for you? Because it's not about what you're not good at. Those things will take a lot more time to get better. right? You're going to be here in six months, a year and a half. OK, then what's your top three best things? So from there, whether that means it's a different position, a different offensive tempo, um, a different training style that I think might support your development best, we talk about that from day one. And I've had athletes say no to me because of it, because they identify a certain way. And I've had athletes say, oh my gosh, that's really exciting. Let's go. And having versatility to recruit great people and great athletes uh, allows me the flexibility then to put a lineup together that may not be as prototypical as you might assume. And right now, that creativity has been an advantage for us. I would say as a player, um when I was younger, I identified specifically just as an outside hitter, and it wasn't until I got here that I opened um, my mindset to being more versatile, and I'm mean, especially under coach and switching to play right side and now middle. That is probably the thing I give advice the most about for young volleyball players is the more versatile you are, the more you can offer a coach and the more you stand out against other players. And the more likely you are to be on the court and help your team. So, so Coach, what is, what is Evie's elite ability? And what skills does she have that allow her to transition to the, so to the middle? So when, when I arrived and she was recruited to the roster, I was excited because, well, one, she has something you can't teach, and that's physicality, right? But two, she has a steadiness to her game. And so what you can see in Evie is a predictability, a reliability. Um, the thing that we got excited about was 
a lot of her power, she has great control and command, but in, when you look at a middle, you don't always see the finesse game. Well, Evie has that from her experience on the pin, but we saw her power show up when she was hitting faster tempo sets. So that didn't play to the left side as well. So how do we combine those? How do we make this finesse an elite skill for her in a position where her power can show up and maybe separate her? And so she runs the slide at a really elite level. She's very good laterally, pin to pin as a blocker, always available in transition. And who knows, I might just put her on the left so Nebraska has no idea. <laughs> Coach, you know, third year into this program, uh, you know, when we first met, you were just going to become a mom, and now you have grown the team and your family. Talk to the young women out there that are thinking about getting into coaching and saying you could do this too because you've proven that, you know, despite whatever others may seem as limitations or mm -hmm. starting a family life, you've done so and you've recruited well and you've grown this team to yeah. where you want it to be and further. Yeah, thank you. And you know, it is, it's special to be able to be a parent and a coach, and there's many, uh, men and women alike, right, who are parents and who show up every day wearing multiple hats in their capacity, but there is something different about going through a pregnancy and going through a delivery and going through breastfeeding and going through sleepless nights as a mother that has made this an exceptionally different kind of challenge as a parent because my time is not my own in those circumstances. And yet I still had to develop a program from maternity leave. Um, I still had to develop a program while my baby's in NICU or I'm in the hospital for eight days because I have an emergency C-section. No one knows that. No one cares. But here's the thing, they do when you recognize who matters. And so they care. And that made me wanna show up. So when I speak to young women who aspire to coach, you have to focus on who your circle is. Right? The circle isn't someone out there who thinks, oh, well, she won't have time to do this. She'll be distracted. Um, or also when you're hiring assistants, you know, well, they're probably in their childbearing years, so that could be a disadvantage. No one's saying it out loud, but they're thinking it. And so what I would say to you, young women, continue to persist. Persist and persist because it's hard and possible. It's hard and exciting. Right? It's hard and an advantage. It's not or. We have to take or out of the options. It is and 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 and. And these are some world-class women who are going to go do huge things in their line of work, whether it's coaching or not. We have time for one final question. <laughs> Come on, give me a hard one. No, oh, okay. Just kidding. Give me whatever one you want. <laughs> What skills would you like to improve throughout the season? Oh, good one. Me, personally, I would love to improve on my blocking, which I already have come a long way with. We've been working a lot at it. But um, I'd say that's my main one for sure. Um, I think another thing would just be continuing to work on my point management skills, as we touched on before. That's something that we've been continuing to work on a lot throughout the spring and the summers. But my number one would definitely be blocking. Um, to touch on switching to middle again, I've learned the basics very, very well, and I've mastered the base. Well, not mastered, but we're getting there. Um, but to find more range and find those shots that are hidden that I know I've got. And surprising coaches are always trying to improve too, right? I, I don't forget that. We're all uh, seeking the best of our craft. So one of my goals this year is to continue to find ways to give more voice to the athlete, give more space to the athlete, and let them be in charge of this season. And I would say that to you guys as, as young, uh, as youth and young people, find your voice like you are today. Keep creating more space for yourself, right? Because uh, your potential is endless, and I'm excited to continue to create space for them. Leah, Evie, Taylor, thanks so much. We appreciate your time. Thank Best you. of luck this season. Yeah, yeah you thank you, and thank you guys. Thank you for having Go me. Green. Go Green! Go White! <laughs> Their third season led the Lions to a third-place finish last year in the conference and an NCAA Sweet 16 appearance. Uh, Jess Merzak, grad student, outside hitter, three-time All-Big Ten first-team selection, and Cameron Hanna, grad student, outside hitter, second-team All-Big Ten. Coach, we'll let you ha have an opening statement. Um, well, it's always great to be back in Chicago. Uh, it's a great place. I love it here. Um, thank you to the Big Ten, um, Commissioner, everyone involved in this because it's such a special event, and I'm 
really excited to have these two with me today. Um, we're also, you know, welcome to the four new teams. I'm excited about them. All four coaches are great coaches. They're great programs, and I think they're going to add a lot to this conference moving forward. Um, but thanks for having us. I'm looking forward to the season, and go Big Ten. <laughs> Okay, just a reminder, uh, name and affiliation. Thank you. Alana Goldman, five wins. Um, last year's team really gelled and the chemistry increased a lot as the season went on. What are you looking to fine tune um, for the beginning of this season? Um, we've spent a lot of time together in the summer, which I think helped a lot. Um, last year, we just had a lot of new pieces come in all at the same time in the summer, but we're lucky that our squad this year has mostly been together since January, since our two freshmen graduated early. So we spent a lot of time together, and I think that helped boost our chemistry a little bit. Last year, it was just a bit of a mishmash of new pieces trying to find their place. So I think that was something that we were able to used to our advantage this year, and I think it'll help us out in preseason for sure. Jess, what was it like uh, being part of the national team this year, playing the Dominican Republic, and what did you get out of that experience? Yeah, it was super awesome. I'm very grateful to have had that opportunity, but it's awesome to be on the same team for once with a lot of those girls. You know, you play against Lexi, Merritt, Sarah all the time, and it was cool to see them in a different way and be on the same team as them. And I learned a lot from them. I think they learned a lot from me too, I hope. <laughs> um, but no, it was awesome. It was a cool experience, and I'm grateful to have done it, and I'm looking forward to implementing some things that I learned training with them for this new season. How's it going, Pete, for a Big Ten Plus? Olympics are going on right now. Some former Nittany Lions it, uh, playing in the games. Do you all have viewing parties? Do you dis discuss strategy? Do you say that could be us one day or in the future? You know, how does that you know camaraderie happen around these exciting games? I think it's really cool to see people that have played in our gym and had been in our position in that position, um, and it gives us more of an incentive to work hard every day because that could be us one day. And I think that's why we play volleyball so that like little girls will look at us and think the same thing. So it's a cool chain of events to watch. Yeah, it's cool to go to South Gym every single day and taught in there. We sweat it out. We get down and dirty in there, but it's cool knowing that they went through the same things that we're doing, and we're just lucky to be able to uphold their legacy. Hi, Katie. Uh, hi, Katie. Uh, over here, other side. Right side. Oh, hi. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I'm Chris with Fox 32 in Chicago. Uh, just kind of curious, you mentioned the four new teams, especially on the West Coast. Uh, what, what challenges logistically does that bring um, in, in terms of just not just scheduling, but travel, but also uh, is it exciting to add teams of that caliber to this conference? Yeah, I mean, it's logistically, it's going to be, I think, a learning experience for everyone and how we're traveling. But I mean, I, I love competitive volleyball. I think, like I said earlier, all four teams are going to bring such um, great talent uh, even more into this conference. And I'm looking forward to it. And it's, you know, great coaches out there. And I'm excited to work with them. And um, it'll be exciting. Coach, we have uh, some students from Brunson Academy in Chicago. They're aspiring journalists. I have a few questions for you. My name is Lonnie Jackson, I'm from, and I go to Mitchell Bronson. Um, my first question is, what is what was the hardest game like you have played? Um, I would say mentally, we played Michigan State last year, and that was a tough game for us. I think we. All were a little bit tired. The season had been wearing on us, so getting through that together was a tough challenge. Um, but I would say physically, probably the Nebraska match of last year, um, because it was a long match and it just weared on us both on both ends, mental and physical. Say, I was digging any volleyball for the players. How beneficial was that experience overseas, and what were some of the positives that you guys noticed from your team? 
Um, I think one of the positives is obviously team chemistry. We spent a lot of time together. Um, literally didn't get a second alone for like 12 days. Um, but I think that was great for our team chemistry and we were able to see once in a lifetime things with, with each other, which is just a great opportunity. And it was also cool to see other countries style of volleyball. Um, and I don't think that's something that everyone gets to experience. So it was just interesting to see how different countries play the game. Aaron Ferguson, Wisconsin State General, just going back to your experience in the DR playing with Sarah and other Big Ten foes. Uh, what is the balance or awkwardness of being friends with them and learning from them there and now being competitors and um, you know dealing with that when you see them on match day? Uh, yeah, I think there's just this like level of respect and understanding that we have for one another and we really appreciate each other and how much we all put into volleyball and, and our craft. Um, so there definitely is like a weird balance when we play them. Obviously I want to beat them, they want to beat us, but there's never any sort of like disrespect between us or anything like that. So I think that's pretty cool and unique and I don't think you find that in every sport. So. Uh, Lincoln Ariel Huskers, I'll start Kate. We saw the potential last year with the national championship match had two freshmen setter. Uh, you're bringing Izzy in. What what do you view as the challenges that she'll face to start her college career? And then for the players afterwards, what have your impressions been getting to know her early on? You know, I, I think Izzy's a phenomenal player, and I think she's going to do great. Um, but it, it's, it's always learning. It's always a learning curve. And whether you're a freshman or a senior, I think these guys are still learning some new things about the game. And um, I thought she had a great spring. Did a really good job in the weight room this summer, and I'm looking forward to seeing what she's going to do. And I, I know with the senior leaders that we have, I know they'll help her along the way, and I think that's really important. Um, I think that Izzy is a phenomenal player, whether she's a freshman or four years down the road whether when she's a senior. Um, I think she's come in and she's taken on her role commandingly. Um, and I love to watch her grow and learn us as players, as well as learning how to communicate with us because we're older than her. And that's kind of awkward sometimes, but we're trying to push her to be more vocal and be herself on the court because that's what's going to help us get to those national championship games like you discussed. Yeah, I mean, it's a hard role to take on as a freshman, just coming in and being a starter, let alone being the freshman setter. And she's done such a good job. She like never complains, never talks about it. She just loves her role, loves her job, and she loves learning, which I think is super cool. Because um, as a freshman, you do have, you do have a lot of learning to do. We still have learning to do, like Coach mentioned. So, uh, for the players, what impresses you about Caroline and Maggie, and what have they brought to the team? Go. <laughs> um, I think Caroline brings a lot of punch to the ball. Like, I mean, I watch her hit, and I'm like, I would not want to be on the other end of that ever. Um, and I think Maggie is the exact same way. And I, both of them bring such a strong work ethic to our gym that it forces everyone to work harder. And that's exactly what we want, bringing in new players. So I think they've been great additions, and they will continue to be. Follow up on that, Coach. Uh, what was the recruitment of Caroline like? Did you have to sell her on Penn State? Or did you rely on her dad for that? No, I mean, I'm just happy we got her the second time around. I mean, Caroline, we recruited the first time, and you know, she made her decision. And you know, I think after you know she went to the portal, we had her on campus, and you know, I think it was she knew it was the right decision for her. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure her dad helped a little bit, but I know he wanted her to make that decision, and um, she's been she's been amazing. My name is Brandy Fultz, and my question is: What is the team goal for this upcoming season? Win the Natty. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Coach, you're third year into this now. Talk to me through when you took over this position, what your expectations were then, and how they've come to fruition, some changes, some differences, and some maybe good unexpected things that have happened along the way. Yeah. I mean, the expectations are, I think, always high at Penn State. And for me, it's still to um, you know, honor the alum and all of the work that Coach Rose did to put Penn State 
where it is today. Um, you know, and to continue to recruit great players that are great student athletes and great people, and you know, are, are really great for the game. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think I'm always learning too. So I think it's it's that never ends, and. I think learning from other coaches and just you know being able to be with this group and, and help this group as much as I can. It's always, you know, I want them to leave and be happy about what they've done and, and you know excited about their future. Has there ever been a time when like when you think you didn't like perform as well and describe it? It's a good question. Yeah. Um, I mean, absolutely. You have your best days and you have your worst days. But I think that's the beauty of playing at this level is that you can rely on your teammates to be there for you when you're not having your best day. And you can give yourself time to work your way out of that. So it's, it doesn't have to be like, I'm having the worst day ever and I'm going to continue to have the worst day ever. It can be like, I can take a second off and my teammates can kind of pick up the slack for me a little bit until I'm mentally ready and I'm giving them 100% of what I have in that moment. Cameron and Jess, you guys have uh, been around the Big Ten a little while. Uh, aside from your home gym, where's your favorite place to play? I really enjoy playing at Nebraska. I think um, what that state does for the sport of volleyball is super awesome, and I love their environment. It's a cool place to play. It's loud. A lot of people don't like it, but I, I really do like it. Uh, I think my favorite place to play is Northwestern, just because I'm from Chicago, so a lot of my family gets to come to that match. Um, but gym-wise, I think Minnesota is a really easy place to make yourself comfortable, and for that reason, it would be my favorite. Coach, what have you seen from Jill, Ava, and the other DSs uh, this offseason? Well, I think they, they've done a really good job of pushing each other. I think this will probably be one of the most competitive gyms we've had in a bit. And um, I think they work really hard. They push each other, and I think they help each other to get better, too. Um, so it'll be, it'll be exciting. You know, each of them will make an impact on, on the season. What would you guys say is something you guys need to improve a lot? Um, I think just like our consistency, um, I think that's something that can always be improved. We talk about not having super high highs or super low lows, just finding that happy medium. And you can be a lot of good people playing just good volleyball. You don't have to play great or perfect every single night, but just getting back to getting back to good. Coach, uh, I know it's not finalized, but the house settlement could change the way college sports operate. How, how do you see the potential it has for, to impact volleyball? Yeah, it's going to be a wild world. Or, I mean, it's, it's wild now. But um, I, I'm hopeful with how big volleyball is that we'll be taken care of and that we can continue to do what we do and um, that these athletes get the support that they do. Um, you know, thanks to the Big Ten and, and all of the media outlets that, that play us and um, give us that exposure. So I, I'm hopeful volleyball will continue to grow and even bigger. Uh, for the players, what went into deciding to come back for a fifth year and how would you gauge your comfort level now in year two with the program? I don't think I ever had to decide. I mean, I love playing at Penn State. I'll play there. If they give me six more years, I'll play six more years. <laughs> I think um, it's just fun. Like the environment at Rec Hall, the people that I get to play with, the experiences that I've had, like taking a foreign trip, like that stuff is fun and I'll, I'll keep doing it as long as I can. Yeah, I don't think we want to grow up quite yet. So it was, very, it was a very easy decision for us to come back. But um, like Cam said, like it's just an awesome place to play and being able to play there for five months just didn't seem like that was enough time for us. Katie, double contact, two bros. What's your perspective? Oh, the double contact. Well, I, I'm I'm glad they switched it because we we ran into some problems a couple years ago with uh, our studying situation. But um, yeah, the the two libero rule. I don't I don't know. It's hard enough for me to get one. I don't know if uh, we're gonna have two to be able to flip like that. But um, no, the double contact. I'm 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 happy about that.
Coach, what is something like you will do to make sure your team comes out on top? Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's how you prepare as a coach. I think I have an awesome staff, um, but I think you know, knowing that the coaching staff is committed to the team, and you know, we go above and beyond for these ladies and um, help them prepare as much as we can. So. You know, my goal is to help them be as prepared as they can to compete um, and put them in a position that they feel comfortable with what they're doing and, and how hard they work. But, um, yeah, I, I want them to be successful. Uh, for the players, what impresses you about each other's game and how valuable is it to have each other to lean on? Um. <laughs> We were just talking about this. We just push each other every day. I think obviously physically, like she's a great player and we balance each other out really well. Um, I'm pretty like intense and she's pretty like chill. So I think we have a good dynamic there, but I think we help each other out a lot more mentally. I think we have a good relationship and if I'm struggling, like I can go to her and ask for help and just be like, hey, I'm struggling, like I need you to kind of pick up my slack a little bit here and she knows I'll work my way out of it and vice versa. Um, I think Jess has a smorgasbord of different tools in her toolkit. So I think learning from her, being able to watch her do things, I'm like, how did she do that? And then I ask her and she'll tell me. Like it doesn't have to be like a competition all the time. It's we can learn from each other and that's the best environment to be in. We have time for one more. Mm -hmm. This question is for Cameron, you know, being a local Chicago product, going to Marist on the south side, what's your motivating words to the you know, youth at home playing in club, you know, going around the area saying you know, maybe one day they want to be in your shoes? Yeah. Um, I think actually one thing we were talking about is that club was so long ago, and it seems like when you're in it, it's the only thing that ever matters. And I think club is not, doesn't have to be this like daunting thing where everything that you do is being watched it can be fun like have fun with the sport and go play volleyball at different places and learn from different people because that's the way you'll get better not just working at the same thing every day but learning new things and improving on those katie jess cameron thanks so much appreciate it good luck thank this you. season thank you thank you Coach Adam Hughes, seventh season, uh, led the Terps to three consecutive 500 or better seasons for the first time in nearly a decade. Joined to his right by Samantha Schnitta, the graduate student, outside hitter, averaged two and a half kills per set, and Zoe Wong, senior setter who's a Big Ten sportsmanship honoree. Adam, we'll let you uh, open up with a statement. Just thrilled to be here. Again, it's my third year doing this, and uh, every year it just uh, reminds me how special this is. So happy we have these two here representing us for a variety of reasons. They've been great leaders for our program, and uh, you know, with this new chapter beginning with Big Ten play, just excited to get rolling in literally like two days, three days. It's coming fast, so happy to be here. Okay, again, just a reminder, please uh, state your name and affiliation when asking questions. Let's start in the back with Lincoln. Lincoln or Neil Huskers Illustrated. Adam, this is one of the oldest teams I've seen. How do you use that to your advantage? I don't know how many people you had come back for their fifth, sixth year, but it's a lot. Yeah, how do you use that? I think we've got eight seniors coming back this year. Um, it's one of those things where we're wrapping up the, the COVID generation. Um, I think it's huge for us just because we've got a lot of vets, a lot of experience. Um, it's one of the things we're banking on. You know, the last couple of years, we've had some people have good years individually, but now we're hoping we can put it all together and kind of align that. You know, Anastasia Russ is a great example. Two years ago, she was all conference, and, um, you know, we're hoping that Schneider can have a really good breakout year for us. If we can put it all together, we feel like we've got a lot of experience. Um, we're also changing our non conference scheduling a little bit, trying to attack the RPI as best we possibly can. Um, and to do that, our schedule is kind of all over the place. You know, we're playing some midweek matchups and. Yeah, so it is, um, it is a very, very old group. And, um, you know, it was a great spring for us, realistically. It was nice to have almost 16 bodies to be able to practice um, all, all semester. So we're, we're excited about the, the beginning of the preseason. Samantha, you're one of those people who are coming back. What, what, it is, what is the strength of having so many people with experience in fifth, sixth years? What does that mean? How, is it, how do you get that translate to success on the court? I think it's able to tran transition in that way because like, sorry, I'm thinking before I speak, jumped right into it. <laughs> um, 
nothing's new. Nothing's a surprise. Like, we've been in this conference. We've been here. I mean, we do have newcomers. We have freshmen. But having so many um, seniors and, like, to-be graduates, like, allows us to set the tone for the newbies of, like, this is what we're going to do. This is why we do it. This is how we do it. So, yeah. Alana Goldman, Five Wins. You've had a very consistent Big Ten record over the last couple years. Could you talk a little bit about the intangibles that a casual fan might not notice over the last three years and what you're going to do to take the next step forward? Yeah, we feel like we've built in stability. I mean, that's one of the things that we didn't want to be just a flash in the pan. I think this kind of started in 21 when we were able to beat Wisconsin before they won a national championship. And it was really crucial for us to follow it up with another good season. Um, you know, but what I love, the fact is that we've had three successful seasons and it's not enough. You know, I think people really want us to make the tournament. I think we've talked about it a lot. You know, we spent a whole spring talking about how these are the habits we need. And, um, you know, we really wanted our seniors to come back to see if they take one last shot and see if we can get there. So, yeah, for us, it's, um, you know, we've had significant wins, you know, picked up, uh, like I said, a good win against Wisconsin a number of years ago, beat Minnesota at home last year. We've been able to beat Ohio State and Purdue. Um, conference is getting bigger, obviously getting better, so we know we have a bigger challenge in front of us. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's why we all chose to be here. It's the big time. Coach Players, we have uh, some students, aspiring journalists from Brunson Academy in Chicago. They have some questions for you. I heard you guys have the toughest questions. That's what the story is upstairs. So, um, My name is Lonnie Jackson. And what do you think is an advantage that your team has that no other team has? Yeah, I think the seniors are for sure that, you know, just a lot of experience being in situations, both good and bad. You know, you learn a lot of lessons, and that's one of the challenges when you have a younger crew is, you know, these guys know how we've changed our offense and why we've changed our offense over the last few years, what are the shortcomings and why we're making those transitions versus some of the newcomers come in and really don't know exactly what the, the, what the why is behind those things. So we're banking pretty hard on experience, and, um, you know, I think that's uh, going to serve us well in the long run. My name is Brandy Foltz, and my question is, what is your greatest accomplishment as an athlete? That was a good question. Um, yeah, if you have one. <laughs> um, I'll go first. I'm trying to think of a good one. Oh, <laughs> um, being a 5'3 setter, it's really hard for me to play uh, at a super high competitive level. So to me, honestly, just being in the Big Ten, being able to compete at this level and see some of the best players in the country is probably my biggest achievement. Um, probably like along the same lines. Like when I was getting recruited in high school, I was seen as undersized and like labeled as like maybe not able to compete in the Big Ten. And while I didn't start in the Big Ten, but being able to come to the Big Ten and compete and work against these other players, like it's super cool and a big accomplishment for me. I was going to coach P for a Big Ten Plus. Uh, this is for Samantha and Zoe. You know, you have such a senior-led team, and you talked about that so far. How do you still integrate your young players as much as possible, knowing one injury away, one set away from needing them to step up into a role that maybe they're not getting the reps that at other programs or at other times that they would be getting? I think our gym does a very good job of being able to get reps equally, no matter what. Like, when we play sixes, like, everybody gets to play a little bit different position, and everybody gets tried in different positions. And so with that, we all have the ability to step in for everybody. I think something that's really unique about us is like everybody has the knowledge and the skill level to step into somebody else's role when needed. And I think our support from our older and upperclassmen allows those freshmen to feel confident stepping into those roles. Or if they have questions, they're not scared to ask us. Yeah, I would, I would also say last year we had a really unique example of someone um, when we didn't have a lot of depth when I first got started, a lot of the freshmen had to play right away. And um, there's a little lack of pressure to that sometimes. There's no one gunning for you. You're just put in that role and it's, hey, trial by fire, figure it out. But you don't learn some of the lessons of what it feels like to battle to win that spot. And so we had some players who've had to deal with that in the last year as we've gotten more depth. And um, I think they've become stronger because of that. So I think the nice thing with these guys being good leaders is they're teaching the youngsters what that's like. And um, when you get your opportunities, make the most of them. And when your time is called, you'll earn it. And you know we trust that you'll make the most of that. When you were younger, like, was your first sport volleyball or not? Nah? <laughs> I started playing volleyball when I was probably 10, but first I played soccer. So I played soccer, volleyball, and basketball. 
So everything a different season. And then in high school, I threw the javelin. So really did a lot of different things. Yeah, for me, I didn't do any other sports. <laughs> it was just volleyball. Um, started in fourth grade, so pretty young. So I fell in love with it pretty hard. So The Orioles will be mad at me, but I thought I was going to play for the Yankees. I thought I was going to be Don Mattingly. So. Hi, my name is Terrence Walker. I'm the chaperone for them. Uh, so I have a younger sister. She plays volleyball. She's a junior in high school. So what advice would you give her, like, to be prepared to play on that higher level? Because she wants to get in the Big Ten. Like, she wants to get in the higher level of volleyball. So, you know what I mean? I played volleyball in high school, but I didn't, like, play it to, like, I want to get on a higher level. I just play it to, just to play it for fun. Sure. But I want her to uh, live up to her dream that she want to do a Big Ten. So what advice would you give a junior in high school to be ready, prepare mental, physically for a high level of volleyball? I you want me to take that? That's good. I'll take it. <laughs> I was just going to say I think it's, it's hard. I think it's probably harder than some people anticipate. And I think there's a lot of challenge. Like, you really have to grind. Like, you have to be on top of your schoolwork. Like, it's, like time management is really important, especially – if you're in high school and you want to get to like a high academic school, like it's important that you're on top of it and it puts you above kind of other athletes that might not focus on their academics like that. Um, and I also think just like you have to work like a lot of reps, a lot of time in the gym, like it's like it's a grind. Yeah, I was gonna say reps, as many reps as you can get, and especially to get kind of in the weight room, get used to moving a bar around Olympic lifts, like that helps you grow on the court super fast. And if she's six nine and has a massive wingspan, it also helps. Yeah. <laughs> Can't teach height. Um, but so when other teams will come play you, they'll oftentimes spend a, D, a day in DC. I, mean, I live in DC. Do you guys have anything planned, especially with the addition of the West Coast schools? They should all do a full day tour outside in the sun, <laughs> outside all day, walking around. Mall, it's great. There's yeah. been a history of teams who have done that and then lost to us, and uh, we would ask all of them to come in here and do a tour of DC. Great. <laughs> the walking tour. Yeah, must be walking. Yeah, must be walking. If you didn't go to Maryland, what would you go? Um, I'm from Virginia, so I would say probably like UVA or Tech. If I didn't play athletics, probably KU. I'm from Kansas, so stay home. But other than that, I wouldn't change where I'm at. I went to Penn State, so stayed in the Big Ten family. <laughs> How do you handle pressure during a competition? I lean on my teammates. I think that's what we have as a really good culture is like being able to lean on each other whether somebody needs the help or somebody doesn't need the help, like being able to look to the person to the left and to your right and really lean and believe in them. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely talking to my teammates. Um, but I think in practice, we do we practice a lot of like these like little competitions where there's like pressure. If like, you don't get the point, you go back to zero. Or like if you make an error, like you're minus points. So I think we work a lot on, at least in games, like dealing with pressure and trying to overcome challenges of like feeling like you have to be perfect for a certain point. Yeah, I would just say you change your mindset towards pressure as a privilege. You realize that you want to be in these situations, and it turns into kind of a joy. Adam, how does your how does your job as a coach change when you have a team that's this experienced? Right, I mean, you're not coaching the little things, where to go, what to do, right? So how, specifically, what are you able to work on when you have a an experienced team? I think every year I've kind of tried to figure out what the vibe of the group is and see what I need to be to support that. You know, some years it has to be a little bit more supportive. Some years they need a little bit more drive, a little bit more determination. This year it's a little bit more clear. You know, I think they're an eclectic group, realistically. we got a lot of personalities from different backs or different walks of life. Um, and I think we thrive in that kind of scenario. One of our things that we talk about in our culture is be you aligned with us. we got people from all over the country. We now have a, a student athlete coming from Turkey this year. So I think that's one of the things that actually makes us strength, uh, a big strength. You know, we have some transfers, too, who have brought some of their experiences with us. So for me, it's trying to find you know, this common ground between all of that. And um, I think it's easier when you have a lot more personalities. Who would you say is your biggest rivalry? Right. Rivalry, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we always say Penn State just because of Hughes and his background there. <laughs> I want to beat him so bad. 
That's the reality of it. I'm really good friends with Katie. I'm, uh, I went there. Russ Rose is a, a dear mentor and uh, like a second father to me. Um, I always joke uh, in his last year before he retired, I took him to five. I was up 2-0 and choked that one away, and he ended up winning in five. He told me he needed that win more than I needed it, and I disagree with him. Uh, I needed that win badly. He retired afterwards. But, yeah, I would like to be Penn State. That'd be good. Any other questions? Yep. Again, for the players, when you have the young, you know, high schoolers looking to make their college decision, you know, it's not as often where you have players maybe stay locally or play locally, both of you, not necessarily in that situation. But what drew you not only to Maryland, but to stay there? Well, personally, I'm kind of local. I'm probably about an hour away from College Park. So I grew up driving to Maryland games. I watched a lot of basketball. Um, but I think for me, like, I really love being close to my family, and I think I really discovered myself and who I am and who I want to be. So I've developed a lot as a person, and I think Maryland and then the staff around Maryland and the different opportunities that they offer have really allowed me to grow and find my own, which is why I've stayed. And then I'd say looking for another school, another program halfway through my collegiate career, I was really looking for a connection a connection with our head coach, our assistant coach, being able to walk in and have a, like uncomfortable, comfortable conversation. Like those com like conversations with a head coach are uncomfortable. Like that's what it is. But to know that he, Hughes, like really took care of me and cared for me and who I was and like was able to open up to his family like from the start, from my visit, like that was so special to me that I wouldn't ever want to change it, so. For me, it's uh, people matter. You know, I have my kids around the program a lot. Took them on foreign tour last year. You know, I want them to see the strengths of uh, young women and, and role models. Um, you know, honestly, college athletics is changing a lot. And for us as coaches, I think we have to readjust and make sure we keep finding our purpose. You know, I think Zoe nailed it. You know, she's something that her story is why she's here in a lot of ways. She was someone who was trying to kind of find her way a little bit. And now she speaks for our entire athletic department as our SAC president. I think she represents our culture and exactly why, you know, we want her to be here to showcase it. Outside of volleyball, do you have any other skills? And also, Coach, what is something you would do to make sure your team comes out on top? You guys can start that. Um, outside of volleyball, I think I'm a pretty skilled cook. <laughs> that might be self-declared. Like, self um, but I enjoy baking and cooking. <laughs> Probably also enjoy cooking, but um, I like to paint. Paint's one of my big things, one of a, an outlet that I've always looked to from high school. So, whether it's good or not, something I like to do. <laughs> I would say to answer your question, how do we come out on top? I think it's really important to be grounded and have perspective. It allows you to be competitive. You know, to realize that yes, this matters, but in the grand scheme of things, it's what you're becoming as a result of this. I want them to, you know, embrace the competition. I think this spring we've done a really good job of that. But for us, um, it's probably just being grounded and uh, having good perspective. Adam, thoughts on, on no double touch and the two bros? Uh, Marsha's here, too, so i got to be careful how I say this. Yeah. Um, I do not care about the, the double at all. I honestly, I'm a stats guy. I see it called once uh, a match per team. It's something that we don't even like really look at. If anything, I think it will just clean the game up a little bit, a little bit faster. I think the biggest thing will be calming the crowds down when they're yelling for it. It's like, move on. Um, it's already been a thing at the club level. Um, the two libero thing, I, it doesn't drive me in any direction, realistically. I don't know if we would really use it that often I'm into continuity at positions and trying to build some confidence in that. So I probably deflect on that and say neutral. Was that a good answer, Marsha? <laughs> okay. Marsha asked me to ask the question, so. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. kidding, Marsha. Yeah, yeah. um, a, a question. Toughest venue to play away and your favorite venue to play away? You guys can start that. I think toughest is Nebraska. When they get on that run, then the whole environment and the whole gym just takes off, and they just take off with them. And so that's always hard to, like, come back and, like, stop their run and then try to get your own run. And that quiets their crowd, but as soon as they get the ball back, it's really fast. And then probably my favorite is Purdue. The way that their, like, their um, student section just gets involved with you guys and is able to cheer with you and like, you're able to have fun with them. And I also believe that their environment is so much like our own that we can use that energy for ourselves. So. Yeah, I think one of my favorites is Wisconsin. 
I think last time I had some friends who went to Wisconsin, so I got to meet them kind of outside, like around like the bleachers, and I got to walk around, and there was like taking pictures with the badger, and I was like, should I get in? Like it was really kind of fun, and it was the crowd behind us is really loud and kind of in your face, and I thought it's always fun to play when a team is like that. Um, the hardest, I think. Minnesota is also pretty hard. It's a huge gym, and they feel really far away, and it feels like almost kind of quiet, but then they get really loud, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, and it's a really big gym, so I like it. I would say it's hard for me to play at Penn State. Um, as an alum, it's, I don't want to be the center of attention in anything. It's hard to get out of that, because I spent so much time in that place. Um, I'm most excited to play at Oregon of the three new schools. I've never played there. I played at the other three. Um, and my favorite is probably Madison. Um, I'm a runner, so it's a great place to go for a run. Last question. You get the last question. How about that? Ooh, pressure. Coach, who would you say is like your best player? So I've got three daughters, and I've learned you can't have a best daughter. You have a daughter for this, a daughter for that, a daughter for this. So, All right, so let's, let's make this easy. I, who, would gonna, you, who would you say is the player, like, basically that is unstoppable against the other team? Um, you know, we're probably looking at Schnitta to have a breakout season for us. I think if, if um, you know, she, she came in last year and I think was trying to kind of find her way just in what the conference looks like. And, you know, I think you see, for us, it, it's like watching a trajectory of where you're going. In the second half of the Big Ten, I thought she was playing as best as any opposite in the conference. And I think she's built that confidence over just, a, you know, a number of matches in Big Ten play. So we're hoping that uh, she can lead us there uh, this season. Adam, Samantha, Zoe, thanks so much. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you. Oh, do you have another question? Okay, I thought you were looking. You're good. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Thank you.